Hey, welcome back here to another episode of the Central PA Poor. And look to my left, Mr. Kevin is back in studio with us. So, how's everybody doing? Where were you at? Where were you just at? Columbus, Ohio, for the week. All right, had a large show we attended. Yeah, you're you're home for a while now. Two weeks, I hope. Two weeks, and then All Texas. Right. So this is going to be our St. Patrick's Day episode. So uh, we're gonna hopefully get into a couple Irish things and. Maybe Aaron Gobra and all that kind of stuff, but we'll see what happens. Mr. Dave. Yo. Speaking of uh, Irish, we have an Irish red we put on the kegerator. Yeah, we did. Can't wait to tap into that one. So and where can they find the Central PA Pour? On all of the channels, YouTube, Facebook, all of them. Yeah, look us up at Central PA yeah. Pour. You forgot yeah. that part. Well, if they don't know that by now, I mean, come on. <laughs> CentralPAPOR at gmail.com. You yeah. can get a hold of us. And uh, make sure you check out Ben with our Wednesday Night Lives, the Mix Absolutely. of Six, every Wednesday at 9 o'clock. And uh, make sure you give us a subscribe on the YouTube and give us a like and share on all our social media platforms. But we have some special guests in here. And uh, we're going to let them introduce themselves. So welcome, gentlemen, to the Central PA Poor. How are we all doing? Very good. Very good. Very good. Yep. Thanks for having Thanks. us. Thanks You're having welcome. Us. So let's find out who we are sitting with and uh, what you represent. So I don't know. We'll start off here uh, to my left here, Mr. Jim. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we're all uh, members of the uh, Southern County Amateur Brewer Society uh, Homebrew Club. Uh, here in Southern York County, Pennsylvania. Uh, I'm the current acting president. My name is Jim Herberson. Um, I've been brewing since 1995, um, so I got a few years under my belt there, but um, I uh, joined up with this club. We moved up, uh, my wife and I moved up in 2014 um, and uh, met SJ at his his homebrew store, and uh, that's where they were, they were starting the club up. So I'm one of the founding members and the current acting president. Well, you know that's going to be forever, right? <laughs> <laughs> we we we, we uh, force a few into the role here. <laughs> we like we like to, we like to keep the blood the strong young, arm. There yeah. we go. So keep going around there, around the table there. So my name's Adam Fulmer. I'm the current vice president. Uh, I started home brewing probably early twenty, probably like twenty oh three, um, but I didn't have a kit. Really, just kind of hung around guys, home brewed like that. Um, and then back in 2020, I actually bought my own kit, started home brewing, and it wasn't very long after that that I found the guys on Facebook and started connecting, and the rest is history. It's been downhill ever since. <laughs> ever since. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> All right, keep going. Okay, uh, Chuck Jennings. Um, I'm the acting secretary treasurer right now. I've uh, been home brewing since 2016. Uh, Always wanted to do it, and Steve had the store five minutes from my house, so what a better way to start. So, there we go. There yeah, we go. It's all downhill from there. <laughs> all right, and final, final. And finally, I'm I'm Steve Poor. Some folks know me on YouTube at SJ Poor. A lot of folks you'll hear call me SJ. That's usually the way it works. Depends on how long you've known me is to what you call me, you know, through the years. But, uh, yeah, I'm one of the founding fathers of Scabs. Um, I used to have a homebrew supply store called the Grain Builds located in uh, Cape Horn. Unfortunately, uh, the times didn't allow us to, to keep it going. But uh, we branched off of Yaha, which is York Area Homebrew Society is what I – or. Uh, York area, yeah, yeah, I'll figure out the acronym or whatever. <laughs> um, they used to meet at our store, um, but they're more York located, and uh, these guys were all more southern York County. So they once Yaha kind of left the store, these guys came up and were like, hey, let's start up a new club. So we started up Scabs. Uh, it was based out of the store. Uh, store closed now, I want to say three, yeah, about five years now, I would imagine. And uh, we've kept the club going strong. We are a uh, sanctioned club, you know, so we're recognized through the AHA, which is cool. Um, we do a lot of events locally and all that jazz. I am not a officer. 
<laughs> Anymore, right? Anymore. <laughs> you filled all them roles there, didn't you? Uh, yeah, pretty, pretty much. much. Yeah, from the beginning on. I The only I've not been a vice president. Don't get any ideas, guys. <laughs> well, gentlemen, welcome to our little recording studio in yep. the central PA poor. I think we met you guys down at... Okay. Yeah, brew kids on the block. Yeah, so, mm-hmm. uh, a couple of you, I think, was it Adam? You sat in, and yeah. who else? Somebody else sat in. Jim, Jim sat in, yeah, sat yeah, in Jim. a little bit uh, yeah. during our attempt to do a live stream. <laughs> <laughs> it, it worked out somewhat. We won't go there again. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, we, it was fun. That was the first time we've ever been to an event like that, and we had a blast. And it was, you know, we're meeting you guys and some other people down there. We had a good time. So. Scabs. I mean, so it is a home brew society, and how did you guys figure out to come up with scabs? Because you tell somebody scabs, they're going to look at you a couple different ways. Yeah, we get that. Um, What was funny is we were at um, NHC in Pittsburgh. Um, Great place to have a booth with the name scabs. (laughs) (laughs) So they kept coming up and making comments about it. Um, it's kind of, uh, you know, it, it encompasses Southern York County, Yeah, you know, and that's, that's where the base is. And the, the acronym just kind of, well, it is what it is. And it's, it's yeah. it, like you just said, it'll bring up a conversation piece in a hurry. Yeah. It does. It's, it's love it or hate it. Yeah. yeah. Right. 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 <laughs> so from what I'm getting out of you, you guys have been doing this quite a long time as home brewers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What, what was behind the idea of home brewing? Oh, Jim, since you're, you're the longest there, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I uh, think I was 19 or 20 when I started, um, and at the time I could buy the ingredients, and, uh, you know, I didn't have to be 21, so I could... <laughs> <laughs> I could There's, that's I the could first time the I heard that. One. that. <laughs> I, I just thought, yeah, absolutely. Um, so, uh, I, but a, a friend of mine was doing it, and, uh, you know, he was sharing his stuff with me, and I'm like, this seems like fun, you know, like, and he's like, uh, you know, took me to... But Maryland Homebrew was... was you know, was and kind of still is my store, but, um, you know, I, I've watched those guys grow up too. Um, you know, they've gotten bigger. Um, but, uh, that, that was where it all kind of started for me. A friend was in, into it and I got into it and, you know, he's, you know, we, we both kind of like, you know, take some time off and we'll come back to it and, you know, but it's, it's always been a fun, creative, you know, outlet something to do and you know we we like to come out and promote the club and the the hobby of home brewing to show people that it's possible to you know it doesn't have to taste like it was made in a bathtub or something you know it's like it's <laughs> you can make beer that's just as good as really the commercial bad. stuff <laughs> for, for me yeah like i'm gonna say isn't that what they used to do back in, the, in prohibition <laughs> they used to make stuff in the bathtub yeah. <laughs> that's that's the myth yeah that's the ur- <laughs> urban legend is what they yeah I'd say a lot for me was the unfortunate part in Mississippi, you you couldn't get good beer. Yingling was considered like a craft beer and it wasn't local. So like my first beers that I was introduced to was like Chimay and um, Buffalo Sweat. Good beers Sweat. to be introduced to, yeah. Right. But a lot of the guys that I brewed with, those beers were not, they weren't able to be found so they started brewing those beers because it was a lot cheaper to get the ingredients than it was to spend the uh, $200 on a case because to truck it into Mississippi, apparently they were a geographical oddity. Wow. Mm-hmm. And about you, Chuck? Well, just uh, I worked with a guy that home brewed, and he gave me some of his beer, and I was always interested in it. It was always something that kind of fascinated me because, you know, I like beer. So, uh, But uh, SJ had the store. Like I say, five minutes from my house, and he had to learn to brew day. Stopped in, asked a ton of questions, <laughs> a ton of questions. But uh, yeah, rest is history. So yeah, yeah, it's just it's a fun hobby. It is. It's a it's a great hobby to get into. It is fun. So Chuck was a lot of fun when, when we had the store, and he would come in like two or three times a week, every week, you know, we did the, we did the learn to homebrew day at the store and he came in and I swear he came in every day to look at the fermenter. Yeah. How's it, you know, what's it doing? What's it doing? I was so glad when you finally had that first batch and it was awesome. It was very cool. So what kind of equipment is everybody brewing on? I mean, I, I guess said, I think before we sat down here, we did kits up until this last one. Um, Kettle and and the, and the extract ingredients and some water, you're good to go. Um, 
but I think you guys are probably upgraded since that. You guys, are, yeah. So yeah, a couple COVID, times. yeah, COVID. <laughs> I, I built a brewery in the back of the house. I did see that video. So yeah, oh, I almost died in that one too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it was part two is when I tried to drop a beam on my head. But uh, uh, yeah, so I have a three vessel Herms uh, electric system that uh, controller is is done by um, oh, Warthog. It's a Warthog three thirty. Works nice. I still kept my original, the cube, man, the, the gravity system. That's up in the garage. You know, it's money. You know, you, you have that original system that you brewed on. Like, you know, you said you just did your first all grain. Yep. Right. So you'll probably never get rid of that system. Yeah, no, you'll just hang on to it. Yeah, because I don't plan on doing more than a five gallon batch. <laughs> <Yeah>. So. <laughs> So, yeah, I, I've got the three vessel herms. I can do 15 gallon batch or 10 gallon batches, really. And if I want to do something smaller, I go up in the garage and, and get that. Everybody has different systems, yeah. which is cool. Yeah, I started out just with the, the basic kit, you know, the kettle and fermenter. And I bought a burner and trying to brew outside in the wintertime is no fun. So uh, I bought a grain father, all electric system. Do it in the basement. That's similar to the Brazilla, correct? Similar to the Brazilla, yeah. Okay. Yeah, they're, they're pretty similar. But, yeah, love it. Brewed yesterday, so, yeah. Oh, Don't nice. have to be out in the cold. That's, that's <laughs> what What did you brew yesterday? I brewed a cream ale that I'm going to put vanilla in it. So. Oh, that nice. seems to be the new thing right now. Every, yeah. Everybody's talking cream ale. Uh, cream ale is just it's, it's something coming back. I mean, it's yeah. one of the styles I think is coming back. I think ales are making a comeback. Yeah. All, all around. I think mm -hmm. all the ales are starting to come back. So. They're getting to more traditional beers. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you've, you've had the crazy thing. Yeah, you know, now let's step back and get a little more traditional. Yeah, that's what yeah. they were talking in Cincinnati. Absolutely. Yeah. So, what's our, I mean, at, this is just, I mean, you guys have been doing this for quite some time. Jim, long, long time. Mm -hmm. Any ideas of going to the next level, or is this just a hobby that you want to, that you love? Uh, I I uh, I go back and forth on that because it's all you know it's always one of those sort of like fantasy things that just like to to take it and go pro and you know have have your own thing and be able to control it all. Um, but I I also like worry about losing the fun of the hobby at the same time where like it just becomes work. <laughs> yeah. So you know, and the other thing is you know I don't I don't think it pays that well generally <laughs> so you know it's like if i was to switch from what i'm doing now to you know go be a pro brewer i'd probably have to take a pay cut <laughs> to do it but you know it does seem like a really fun thing to do and uh you know it's, it's always been kind of a fantasy of mine so i you know always uh i i still think about it you know so it, it never really leaves my mind of you know the the thought of going pro and you know doing it for real no, it's it would be a big step. It would be for sure. It's oh. it's a huge gamble. Mm -hmm. These you know. two guys here have actually, you know, Adam's been helping out, and Chuck has actually helped out over at Scrubby's. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. they they're they're getting a taste of it. You yeah. Know? yeah. So you're helping Emory out. Helping Emory out when I can. Yeah, I, I work in a tap room right now mostly. Uh, we were supposed to brew a beer together. He had Falcons Prey on tap. Yeah, that's pretty and, good beer uh, there. Yeah, so he had COVID, so we had to cancel, and then I got the flu, and we had to cancel, but he had to go. He had everything ready, and I said, just, just do it. So we'll brew something someday. I've been over a couple of times, so, yeah. Yeah, he does. He's he's putting out some good stuff, and I he think is. when we had him on the episode, uh, you know, where he opened his tap room was just right up his neck. You know? Oh, was, yeah. That was yeah. right, so to speak. Up his alley. Yeah, it was meant to be a good one. Yeah, yeah it was meant to but be. Dumb. Yeah. <laughs> the, the best thing about Scrubbies, the, the beer names, like, that's my favorite, absolute favorite thing about brewing beer is naming beers. Mm -hmm. Like, anything that you can name them, the crazier, the weirder, the more outlandish, the better. And when you've got that premise of, especially like a bowling alley, and you can do the months in and you can do certain things. The, the, yeah, the dude. The dude. Like, yeah. You know, like, Dude's very popular. Oh, that's good. So yeah. that's that's one of my favorite things is definitely naming them because it's yours. Mm -hmm. Yep. So do you guys, I mean, you each have your own little home brew. Do you have names for your home breweries? Yeah. Or? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we're uh, Enabler Brewing. I've been Enabler Brewing kind of since the beginning, um, you know, but we're... Um, you know, we have a friend who's a graphic designer, and I asked her to make a logo for us, and she did. And so then we, um, you know, kind of we have it the embroidery set up, so we have shirts made and all kinds of stuff. And you know, so we we actually have a brand, and that's kind of the, the fun part of it is like trying to, you know, you're feeling like professionals, you know, like you're representing, 
Um, you know, and that's when, you know, going to the festivals, like SJ mentioned, um, you know, comes in and you get to actually serve your beer to the public, you know, so it's like, you're not selling it, but you know, you're close enough. <laughs> a lot of your competition, a lot of your competitions require brewery names. Yeah. So like I, okay. I started welded brew works. Um, it, I've been welded, you know, I welded most of my life. So it was kind of like a normal thing that I could get in a whole bunch of like, you know, TIG rod and MIG weld. Like there's a whole bunch of names that you could go through. Um, I do like I do like the logo with the with the welder's helmet and the hop right in the middle. Yeah, uh -huh. It That's almost cool. looks like a Cyclops from Star Wars or something. <laughs> um, and it was as simple as I a, a buddy of mine that's he was a mechanical engineer that does HVAC work that I called him and was like, Hey, this is what I want to do. Popped a couple things together. Can you, you know, can you work something up for me? He had it in CAD, sent it back, and I was like, Yep, works for me. I mean it and that's the best thing about home brewing cheaper and and how you make stuff you're going to throw stuff together it's not going to be like everything is store bought so mm -hmm. why why have it when you you know do the rest of the stuff and i guess you know you're looking at throwing stuff together as far as ingredients you're not doing a seven barrel system where it could fail so yeah. right that'd yeah. be a huge yeah. thing yep yeah. Chuck, would you have a name for yours? Yeah, I'm, I'm one black mutt brewing. Um, we used to have a, a mixed black lab, and uh, when my father-in-law was, when he was still with us, he used to just say, "You old black mutt," and you know, it just kind of stuck. So uh, you know, that's where that comes from. So it kind of, you know, keeps him in mind and our and our long gone dog. But uh, yeah, yeah, that's so, pretty cool. And it, it, like like Adam said, it's neat when you go to the festivals because. When you do have a name, people do recognize that. You yes. know, they oh yeah, you were here before. You know, and and that sort of thing. So it works out. And I go off of Little Face Brewing. Okay. The little Face of the logo I have here on this beer, you can kind of see that uh, is uh, the logo is a, a dog we used to have, Duke. Okay. And uh, he was the one. He was my brew buddy. So every every batch of beer I brewed, he sat next to. He was like, did you ever see the um, oh uh, Chevy Chase? movie where he had the yellow dog and it was sitting next to the fire and the dog he'd yeah. have to reach over the thing and pull the tail away from the <laughs> from the fire from catching fire that was duke he would like lay under you know the burner and he'd be like dude you're gonna catch fire you know um so he was my he was my uh he was my buddy and little face Bruin gives you like adam said all kinds of crazy names you can come up with That's you know cool. so we always like to say get your little face on yeah. <laughs> what do we call ourselves when we when we brew? Drunk. <laughs> Essex Home Brew Works. Absolutely. Oh, very nice. So, because yeah. this is Essex Road. Sure. Um, and kind of like the first couple brews that we're doing all green, I'm sticking to a traditional English because Essex is from England. So, kind of sticking along that style. So, we'll see. Never say. We keep joking about buying this building down the road here to, to open up Essex Brew Works, but uh, it ain't going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> but speaking of beer, I think we have uh, this is this is from <clears throat> you, Steve, Little yeah. Face. Little Face Brewing. Uh, kind of just tell us what we're going to be drinking. So this is uh, Two Dogs Licking. You know, you can just let your imagination go there. Uh, <laughs> it was a recipe. It yeah. <laughs> it was a recipe. It was actually one of the very first recipes I ever developed a uh, long time ago, back when uh, Mr. Steve still had his homebrew store in York. And uh, he he got a kick out. Every time I'd come, you know, I'd say, hey, I'm going to do a Two Dogs, and he would just laugh. He thought that was funny. <laughs> uh, but it's an Irish red. It is uh, traditional. It's a very traditional malt forward, Irish red. I think it came in at probably like five and a half percent, something like and that. And I guess where mine is at right now, about yeah. five point five. Yeah. Perfect. So cheers. 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 Two dogs licking. Two dogs licking Irish red. I do get some of the, I definitely get some of the malt aroma out of that. That's really good. Yeah. Yeah. That's a meal on a glass. Nice. That's traditional. It reminds me of yeah. the old school Killian's Irish Reds we used yeah. to drink back in the day. Oh, <laughs> it's funny you Killian's say that. Irish Red. <laughs> That's <laughs> literally where the idea came from. Totally better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is that is very good. So, the recipe that I found, since I didn't know much about grain bills and malts, uh, you know, and the, and the different hops, when I was on uh, Brew's Father, okay. I found a recipe for an Irish Red and I swiped it. I'm like, what the hell? And that's when you had said you saw me over at Lancaster. My wife had gotten me a gift card Christmas a year ago, 
She says, when are you ever going to use this? I said, well, we're going to go to Lancaster today. And uh, I was in there, asked, like you were saying with Chuck, I was in there asking a ton of questions. Mm-hmm. Yep. I've never done this. He took me back here, showed me to pull the greens mm-hmm. and mill them out and gave me a bag. And yeah. I tore the bag, putting it in the car, and sh- my wife ran back in and got a heavier bag. I went over this time with a freaking bucket, so I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I said, I'm going to do this Irish red. And then um, it came out. I mean, I had uh, Mark from Dover Brewing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Come over here to help us. Uh, oh, it's uh, Mark Browning, right? Yep, yeah. yep. Because mm-hmm. um, he has a Brusilla too. Actually, he invited us over to help him brew on his bigger Brusilla. He's got the ten gallon or fifteen gallon one. Sixty five, sixty five liter. Mm-hmm. That's what yeah. you have, right, Jim? Yeah, yeah. And the Grandfather G thirty. Yeah, so well, you have one uh, your, right your right wife out. just said your your equipment keeps growing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think I've. You're I've, ready to I've take kind that of stuff. I've kind of peaked out right now. So, <laughs> this but, is, you know, that buy is, once, cry once. So, yeah. Now, is that not the biggest lie that you tell? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The cheapest Here's way this. to make better beer is I need better equipment. Oh my right. god. Right. <laughs> and, <laughs> but, but anyways, going. I mean, it, he come over to help us, and when I. Before I pitched the yeast, I was at 1.054. I was like, well, I did something right. Mm-hmm. The OG was right on right on spec. That's, spec, so. oh, that's good. And then I bought a Sullivan's Irish Red the other week and cracked out. I'm like, well, that looks like what's in the fermenter, and it tastes like what's in the fermenter, so I guess we're on track. So yeah. mm-hmm. kudos. I like that. Right on. So Arundo Gras. There we <laughs> go. Thank you. Uh, Steve Butcher, YouTube channel. What? It says J Poor. Okay. Yep. P O R R S J P O R R. I'll have to sign. I I didn't know about that one, so I'll have to, to look into it. What What's your highlights and? Oh my God. So you'll find a lot of stuff. I have a lot. I've been doing the YouTube thing for quite a while. Okay. Um, I'm part of what? So there? you're an influencer. I'm an influencer. Yeah, you're a uh, what, 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 yeah um, content creator or whatever. Okay. Back in the day when they first did the um, partnership, I was one of the partners. Yeah, that's how long I've been doing it. They don't do that now anymore, but it's a, a partner thing with them. So that was pretty cool. Um, but I've been doing like the brew tubers, um, you know, and all of that jazz and plug them. You know, they're a good group of guys. It's an yeah. online uh, brewing club, brew tubers, mm-hmm. um, and all that jazz. So, yeah, the, you'll find a lot of funny stuff and, and a lot of brew related and all kinds of stuff on there. A lot of education. I mean, that's, mm-hmm. I, that's, I wouldn't say 90, maybe 85% is all online. I mean, now you can find anything and everything depending on who you like and who, and that's another thing. If you like SJ style, you can go with SJ. If you don't like his style and you look at somebody else, you like their style. There is tons of information yeah. that you can just bounce off of and Different people are doing different things. This guy does IPAs like Scott Janice, and then there's um, other guys that you know you might looking at building a system, and you go with um, like short circuited brewing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like there's so many different channels that depending on what you want to dial in, you can use. Right. Which is funny because back in the day, yeah, you know, like back in the day, they were always saying we'd go into like Mr. Steve's and talk to like back in the Yaha days, and he'd be like, oh, don't don't pay attention to the internet they'll they'll send you astray you know and all this and that and it's like that couldn't have been further from the truth you know you get on there and there's just so much knowledge and these and these folks are they're super cool i mean they will share everything they know like literally everything they know and i think that's what we found with this journey is everybody the co- yeah, yeah the community it's that so good is yep. just not the home brewers just even the professional craft brewers oh yeah they're all mm-hmm. part of them because a lot a of them community. came from this yeah right? you know this is you know they're home brewers you know in their bathtub you yeah. know <laughs> you know and and now they you know they're professional brewers and stuff yeah so it's cool Yes, I, I think it's cool that, you, that you've done that for so long, and um, we're just a little over a year doing this, so we we're hoping to get that kind of following, but it is, it's very, like when I got this Brusilla for Christmas, I opened the box, looking, like I wanted to read the manual first, guess what, there's no fucking manual in that box, <laughs> <laughs> so where'd I go? YouTube. Yep. Hell yeah. Yep. Yep. It's exactly where I went, I watched a bunch of YouTube. 
And then we met Mark from Dover Brewing, and mm-hmm. he's like, well, yeah, I'll show you how to use it. I'm like, that was even better. Yeah, <laughs> hands-on, hands-on. hands-on training. Literally, if you want to learn something about any piece of equipment out there, you know, short-circuited brewers, I can't plug Brian enough. Yeah. And, and I've known we're good friends. Um, matter of fact, he's sending me a false bottom because I, I destroyed mine the other week. <laughs> but... Uh, he has done reviews on, I think, every, every single period. piece of equipment yeah. out there. I'm fairly certain. Yeah. You know, so if, go to his channel and check it out, and you'll you there's just tons of stuff that you'll learn. Off and of what it. we can do is, you know, we'll we'll plug those links mm-hmm. when we put this video out in the description. So, you know, by all means, we'll we'll grab them links and we'll stick them in. So, and if you can't find something, you reach out to these guys. They're going to put content out yep. about it because if if you can't find content on it. There's yeah. something missing. Yeah, right. there's something mm-hmm. missing, which by this point is getting kind of hard. But at the same time, it's not because the Bruzilla and all the things that you can do on the distillation side of it, mm-hmm. that's all unexplored I, territory. I did see that, that they you can buy now stills. There you go, mm-hmm. Kev. We got a piece of equipment. You just talked about making a distillery, too. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> but we won't talk about yeah. that. Some, something, oils. <laughs> something sounds a little illegal about that. <laughs> no, we're just, we're just, uh, about that piece oils. of it. <laughs> we're going to do it in the bathtub. <laughs> <laughs> how many members is in the scabs? I mean, how many? I don't know if we touched on it. How many members do you have in the in your association? Like 15? Probably somewhere around around 15. Active. Somewhere around that. It's It's... A handful of us that are pretty active as far as every meeting, you know, uh, we do uh, we do our business meeting, and then every other month we do a social meeting. So uh, we try to hit one of the local breweries, check them out, give them some some little support, and uh, yeah, just try to get us out there. Yeah, yeah, that's that's pretty cool. I mean, and everybody's a different level, I'm assuming, and that kind of. Yeah, I mean, we're actually all. I would say that, you know, this, this group is accomplished brewers. I mean, they really are. Um, yeah, there's no beginners anymore. No. I mean, oh, every, yeah. everybody is, you know, we're, you know, uh, ex- exceptional brewers. I mean, yeah. there's there's not a bad brewer in this yeah. group. You know, every, we all learn from each other, and that's the best, you know, kind of talking about the camaraderie of, you know, the industry. You know, that's kind of what we do. We draw off of each other, share recipes, share experiences. All that, so and yeah. these young guys have come up like you know Adam, Josh Turner. You know they've only been brewing for a little while. Josh is another another member, and they're like, "My, you guys are knocking it out of the yeah. park." I mean, you really are. I I joke with people and I say I don't understand how hard it is to make good beer because you follow certain things and you, cleanly. Cleanly, oh, yeah, yeah. clean, clean and like, sanitized. <laughs> clean, <laughs> sanitized, <laughs> clean, sanitized, clean, sanitized, clean, sanitized, sanitized, sanitized. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, re- you get that one that 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 you remember. You're like, <laughs> yeah, ooh, I don't want to do that is, again. Yeah. <laughs> so, speaking of that, I mean, we, I uh, had my wife. She had, we got a, a cider kit when we were over at Langa. She goes, oh, we can make this. It was a peach mango kit, and we just bottled it last night. And I had her run all the bottles through the dishwasher, and I'm out there filling them. I pick one up. I'm like. Uh, nope. Nope. Didn't come clean. So where I do back in here, get the brush down in there and scrape it out. Then back in the sanitizer yeah. twice. <laughs> Make yeah. sure it was clean. Yeah, you're oh, yeah. better safe than sorry. Yeah. It, it's, mm. You can't, it, you can't yeah, for a few minutes enough. of your yeah. time. I've got yeah. a, uh, I, I've kept a six pack of, what's a good description of it? It would be like, you know, having a, a dentist stick his finger in an infection and shove it in your mouth. <laughs> that bad of an infection, right? And I've actually kept a six pack of that, you know, and I'll, I'll crack one open every now and then just to remind me this is how bad it can be. <laughs> or maybe it cleaned up and it's delicious. Yeah, yeah, best beer you ever made. Yeah, yeah. It's Probably true. not. Not going. <laughs> still not going to. Not going to do that. How do I? So do how do I get this? that thought out of my head? <laughs> <laughs> I will say, everybody. I know that I, everybody, especially in our club, everybody has had that one beer. You brewed it and you were like, "This is bad." I uncorked one of mine a year later and was like. Where have you been all my life? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it, it got better as it aged. Yeah. It can. Not always. Not always. <laughs> but not I, always. Not from, always. From listening to the experience of these guys, I was told, don't always, you know, 
first impressions are not always because the coriander was real too peppery. It just oh. it, it was real bad sure. on it. everything mellowed out, and it was like perfect fusion. But then also like, do you have the extra space to keep that five gallons around? Do you so you got to play those things? I wish I would have bottled more of it. You know mm-hmm. that, that 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 brings back a thought of, of of a story I read about Lee and Perrin. Uh, the two guys that invented Worcestershire sauce. I don't know if you've ever read that story or heard that story, but when they first made the, the made it, they put it in a barrel and and um, they said, "Okay, well, we'll let this sit here for two weeks," and they did, and and they went back to it, and it was the nastiest stuff that they've ever had. So they just put a lid on it and shoved it in the corner and said, "We'll never do that again." Well, they forgot about it and went back a year later and found it and then after they uncorked it and then they they tasted it and it was that's where the the original sauce now is from that recipe it's that good they, shit though yeah oh, they actually man. ferment it for a year and that's that's what they did anybody ever made a beer with that <laughs> somebody uh, yeah somebody, somebody probably yeah, yeah. Somewhere, yeah. <laughs> probably yeah. stone yeah. stone or, or dogfish <laughs> i'm sure they went down yeah. that road i mean they did it with spit for god's sake <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, you got oyster ones yeah. and, oh i went down that road yeah, yeah i did yeah. the oyster stuff yeah. there was a or, uh, kolsch there was a smoked i think there's like a smoked sweet balloon or a smoked lemon yes. balloon yes. Yes. Oh, yeah 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 uh, oh, who does uh, that? That Snitch Creek has oh, one. Yeah, yeah. yeah, over Man- uh, Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I, I, I was up there when they first had it out, and I'm like, okay, I've never had a smoked lager, but this one sounds interesting. It's with the uh, the, the baloney. Mm-hmm. And I opened a can of it, and I was like, oh, oh God, boy. this is like drinking liquid baloney. So <laughs> I think I had these guys tasting yeah. like. <laughs> yeah, I, the fun. It, it, I, I think that, like the first taste. That four that four pack lasted a while, and that last one I opened up, I had to choke it down just to get rid of it. It took you back to the butcher shop. It's about what it was. It's like they melted a piece of bologna and stuck it in a can. Yeah, yeah. Um, So it was. You got to like bologna to get that. Definitely different. Yeah, there's there's sometimes just because you can, do you really need to? (laughs) Right, right. Yes, I, I mean it's been. I mean this is fun. So everybody that's in the club, do they have their own brewery names as well? And yeah, I believe everybody does. For the most does. part, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, Pretty Josh much everybody does. All right. That's cool. Yeah. I mean, like you said, it's that's the fun part. Oh, yeah. yeah. Coming up, my, I know my wife's like, what? I'd, I'd love to have that just to come up with the names for beers and stuff. I'm like, mm-hmm. all right, hon. So we did we did her cider, and I did the last Kolsch kit that I had. All right, now you got two beers to name. Think of them. And then I had the Irish Red, and I said, now you got three beers to name. <laughs> and I'm like, all right. She didn't come up with a name, so... I think I told you what I'm going to name it. Yeah, yeah. Aaron Go Brawless, <laughs> Irish Red. It's going to be a redhead. <laughs> oh, that's I already took. That's already on the label. Yeah, yeah. nice, nice. Now nice. I'm not. Now I see you guys had you new know, cans. Um, so I'm assuming you guys got canners in your places as well. Yeah, you guys are almost a full blown brewery in your house. So I use the um, the American canner. You mine's in October. I have an October SL one. So um, this is out of actually this canner came from a friend of mine from Wisconsin, and it was at NHC 2017, and uh, that's where that canner came. It's a hand deal, you know, just crank it. They're fun, you know, it, one at a time, one at a time. Um, all right, so truth be told, Canon's cool, right? It's right, Jim. I mean, it's it's cool. Yeah, it's really cool. But I can bottle just as fast as I can can. <laughs> you know. Yeah. It's just sure. a cool factor, you know. And cans are a little cheaper to hand out than a bottle. Or not. Not really. Not well, really. I mean cans stack, so that's nice. You know, yeah. if you're if you're putting them in the fridge, you know, they stack nicely. So, you yeah, know, bottles, bottles you can't really do that with. Bottles don't <laughs> stack too well. No. Um so as far as getting your names out there, you guys had mentioned it before. You go to a lot of festivals. Mm-hmm. Um and you go as a festival how do you decide whose beer is going to be at the festival tent or is it just who's going to be there to show up? I'm kind of curious to how you guys decide that if there's like 15, 16 members 
How's that come about? I'm just curious. I mean, we've got those members, but we, we kind of have what we call the usual suspects. You know, it's like it's it's eight or ten of us that are kind of the regulars that are pretty much at every meeting. And, um, you know, so when we know uh, in advance, um, you know, when an event is coming up that we'll be able to participate in, um, you know, usually one of the meetings before that will kind of get a show of hands of who's even available to do it, who might have a beer ready, you know, that kind of stuff. And, and so we kind of work from there. And then at that point, we just try to make sure that we are bringing a, a, a diversity of different styles. So, um, you know, we're not all showing up with a hazy IPA or we've, we've done, <laughs> we, we made we've that, done that. <laughs> we made that mistake once. What's yeah. your, what's your plans for festivals for this year? Uh, well, let's see. Our cruise director, <laughs> we're doing the Glen Rock Arts and Brew Fest this year, I believe. Uh, probably Yorktoberfest. Um, Brew Kids on the Block again, probably. Um, oh, yeah. And then uh, there's a, an event uh, in Baltimore uh, every, the first Saturday of every December. Um, that is a, uh, it's a 5k and a homebrew competition, um, that, um, benefits the, the charter school down there. Um, but that's always a really fun event. Um, I think SJ, I think you got me into that and yeah. we've been going every year since, um, every year that they've had it anyway. Yeah, um, Dick, Dick turned us on to that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You provide, <laughs> you provide, uh, do you provide a beer before or after the run? <laughs> oh, it's after. <laughs> after, yeah. It's yeah. after. So it's cool. The uh, the the benefit they do the five k run and then it ends at the Holmberg competition. That's convenient. Yeah, mm -hmm. and the nice thing about that is, um, and I don't remember if he did it last year or not. There's usually a big sponsor. Like yeah. the year before, it was uh, Devil's Backbone. Yep. You know, so then the winner gets to brew with Devil's Backbone. That's pretty cool. It's kind of like Brew Kids did, didn't it? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. You know, I uh, quick question do you, is: um, do you, Did you ever hear of the Strasburg, the one up at the Railroad Museum? There's a there's a um, festival up there. I was just kind of curious if anyone has ever gone up to that one. Mm -hmm. No, you know, we haven't done that one. No. Uh, okay, the only reason is is that just because of where it's at, it's local and it's easy. I'm thinking about driving up there just for fun, just to see what it's all about. But I, I know nothing about it, and I just thought I might ask. A room full of experts, if uh, they happen to know about anything. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we usually, um, you know, every month we talk about uh, kind of upcoming competitions and festivals and that sort of thing. So, um, you know, it's almost always on the agenda, mm -hmm. you know, and there's a lot of new stuff coming up this year that uh, we hadn't participated in before. So, right. you know, we're looking forward to that. And we do a lot of stuff with uh, Crocodile Marketing. Yeah, um, yeah. They do a lot of stuff in York, you know, mm -hmm. York City, and Glen mm -hmm. Rock down there. Mm -hmm. So uh, they're a great group to work with. They really. Yeah, are. And we have those three on our agenda this year that we're going to try and get to all three of them as well. I don't think we're going to try and do a live stream feed, but we're going to do a live recording. Sure. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah we'll, do we'll do a live. We'll do a live stream. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. see that. <laughs> <laughs> so that we're we're going to plan on being there again. Um, and speaking of ribbons and stuff like that competitions i just noticed on your facebook i see a lot of pictures of a lot of guys from your club yeah, with yeah, ribbons absolutely. so yeah. well, you guys must like you said i think would you say jim that there's not a bad brewer in your bunch that's right yeah i mean um you know every year we've been doing the iron brewer which is put on by lancaster homebrew um and uh that's the the award ceremony for that's coming up in a couple weeks i think um last year we um took a one two three in the ipa category uh, you know a bunch of guys in the club had submitted stuff and we also did well with um you know uh, sj had a really fantastic stout uh what'd you call it revolution mm -hmm. stout revolution oh man stout. that was delicious um but uh yeah i think you you won uh first place in that and best, yeah it was uh best the stout. Best yeah third mm -hmm. third best of show best and then yep. first in the uh stout yeah yep and then josh got the mad chef uh or, uh, was Mad Chef? Was it Mad Chef? Brew, uh, yeah, but they did the, the pro way. Uh, they brewed his big beer. Dog. Big, big dog. Oh, big dog. Big that's dog. right. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, that's that's uh, Mark Lancaster brew. Yep. Yeah, that's his. Yeah. That's his yeah, yeah, big yeah. dog. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Josh got to brew his beer with big dogs. So what a cool, cool. What a cool story from uh, from last year's uh, Iron Brewer. So as a club, uh, we got together and we called it a mystery brew. Right. So I put together a whole bunch of bags. Nobody knew what was in them. It was a bag full of stuff. Here, go make a beer out of it. Right. So we all did it, and it was funny because we got together in our club meeting, and, and, and we drank, and we're like, wow, man, these things are really good. 
right? They, these turned out really good. So I said to the guys, I'm like, hey, why don't we, you know, just see what happens. Let's enter these guys into, into Iron Brewer. And I think everybody yeah. got an, mm-hmm. every yeah. single person got an award. Yeah. For the mystery bag and that their version of that beer. Oh, that's yeah, so well, that's cool. pretty cool. What did it turn out to be? Whatever they wanted. Everybody was different. Oh, yeah, okay. Just, so everybody had random ingredients, and then it was only I don't know. yeast. Yeah, it was yeast, yeast some hops, and hops, and some special grains. grains, and then we had to go and and figure out from there what we wanted to do. So I did a Belgian double with mine, and mm-hmm. and this yeah. was a uh, dark mystery, and it was it won on the. Uh, a Belgian triple won first place for that. So oh, cool. everybody that that put theirs in, they got an award for mm-hmm. it. So that was that was pretty awesome. Is that part of what you had uh, the SJ Poor Challenge? No, completely different. That's a completely different yep. thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. So is that old or is that still going on? Or uh, that has not happened in a while. Um, the dead. Uh, <laughs> I'm good at pouring a fucking beer. Let me tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> and drinking it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The SJ Pour Challenge is a whole nother, you know, topic. That's a, that's a big deal. So, but that's pretty cool. I mean, it's almost like uh, some of those chef uh, shows where you just hey, go get here's your ingredients and then you make out a meal of it. So that was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah it was, it's a good it, idea. It was. Yeah, it's a good it was, good reference. It was, it was pretty much the chopped of yeah. uh, home brewing. Yeah, yeah. it was yeah. fun. It was, it was a it basket was, full was, of ingredients. It was a that good sounds. Time. Sounds like content, <laughs> <laughs> and it pushes you. Oh yeah, like last year. Last year, well, the, well, yeah. Last year's challenge that I wanted to do for myself is I wanted to brew a new type of beer that I never brewed every month. I fell short of it by two beers. But part of the other thing that with these guys, when you go to competitions or you go to these brew festivals, it pushes you because you go and you say, "Oh, you're going to brew an Irish red." and you're going to brew an IPA. You're going to do a Braggot. Well, then... Yeah, yeah I'm going to do this. I'm, I'm going to do the crazy one, yeah. Right. So then I'm thinking, okay, well, what can I brew that's different? And what's going to push me a little bit? And I do the same thing. I'll look on um, Untapped, and I'll start looking around and going, oh, well, what's popular and what's not right now? And then I go on to Brew Father and go, ooh, well, what's what can I tweak? What can I change? Make it a little my own. Add this. You know, once once you start brewing, you kind of get into your own little nuances what, of what you like. Right. When you change them. What is your niche? What do you like to do? I'm. I know the guy, and they'll explain it a little better. There's two types of brewers. There's the mad scientist, <laughs> and then it's like almost I think maybe the old reliable. Mm-hmm. And the mad scientist, the bigger the better. My first beer was 17 percent. Nice. Seventeen percent. Blew it way yeah, out. It was it wasn't barrel aged. It was not barrel aged. <laughs> Holy shit. It was a Russian it was a Russian Imperial that Yeehaw, get yeah, on that uh, horse and ride. Did you get licensed by the uh, <laughs> well, by the it, L C B it's still fermented out. Yeah. It's still fermented out. So I guess it would be still beer at that point. Oh my god, that, that's barely. that's up that's up our alley, man. Yeah. That's we like that stuff. But yeah, I've one U- utopia yeah. almost. Yeah. When you start with that, especially your bigger beers. The sugar helps cover mistakes. Oh, yeah. Bigger beers cover mistakes. And then the joke that I always tell everybody, the hardest beer in the world to brew is a Coors Light. No, it is. Miller Light. Because there's nothing there to hide it. No, wait. I just did. Yeah. That's a Coors Light. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, that's one of the toughest things. Like, your light beers. Um, we were at Patterson Park, and one of the best beers that I probably had ever had was Mark's that... Oh yeah, he it, did that uh, um, session light lager. Yeah, and it was a tremendous beer. But unfortunately, you being a beer nerd, you loved it. Not being a beer nerd and going through and tasting it, and you're like, this is kind of just like water. Yeah, yeah, because he was next door to what did I tell? I had a brag it, you know. And it's like, you know, there are two different worlds. But when you look at the beer for what the beer is, like as a home brewer, and I'll, I'll challenge you guys, you're home brewers, right? Make it make, kind of yeah. Make make a light beer. Make a make a three and a half percent beer. Hmm. It's tough. Well, I I, 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 tough. I agree with that. I mean, it's it's. I can see how it would be really tough to get. You got to get to that OG, and you got to you got to pick some light grain, mm-hmm. and you got to get the grains that are going to work together to not give you that much sugar out of it. Right. Yeah. And then your system has to be flawless, because any little mistake is going to be magnified times ten. 
and then get flavor out of it. Yeah, and then yeah. get the flavor. Top of that. Yep. Yeah, yep. but I I don't see any flavor in the ones that they sell. The light beers that they sell, like <laughs> it, 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 right? <laughs> it, which and, and that's and that's a great yeah. point. You know, they they're they're not very flavorful. No. And I tell you what, my, when we had Molly Pitcher on, he brought his Carlisle lights down here. And, you know, for being a light lager, it had flavor to it. It was very good. You know, it had a little bit of that malt sweetness out of it, mm-hmm. but it was a light beer. Yeah. And I could drink that. You know, I'd be, what do you call it? A lawnmower beer, I think. Yeah. That was his lawnmower beer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but, yeah, so I can see how that can be very hard to accomplish. It is. And I don't know if I, I ain't attempting it. No. Nope. <laughs> What's that commercial? That guy was up in the attic. Nope. 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 No, thank you. <laughs> it's just five gallons you're going to pour out. Yeah. Yeah. I, I got no way of lagering it right now, so I have no way to do a lager. I, I ferment everything at 70 degrees. And well, scratch that. I ferment everything that whatever my basement room is at at the time. Mine ranges from 62 to 67. Yep. That's where it's at. I can't. And I tried a band that I got from Tim March out at mm-hmm. Bailey's. To maintain 70, and that's how our first kit beer got Mm -hmm. messed up. I put the band on it because I knew I needed to keep it 68 on a Kolsch to get that clarification out of it. I come down the next night, it was reading 95 degrees. Six. Uh, yeah, yeah. I called Tim right away. That's going to be fuel, is what yeah. that is. Very <laughs> fusel. Actually, it, so he was like, okay, so yeah, you probably cooked the yeast. Take a little, take a sample of it. And taste it and smell it. If it doesn't smell or taste like a chemical or band aid, you're probably okay. It did not. I left it finish, put it to the secondary, added the raspberry, and it's not a coach. Mm-hmm. I bottled it. It's a raspberry beer. Gotcha. And everywhere I take it to, I'm like, what's this? It's a, it's a fucked up raspberry. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, oh, I like that because they, they either A, like raspberry. Yeah. yeah. And it's all raspberry, but. So it's up in my fridge. I still got a couple bottles of that left, but yeah. So I won't be using that band anymore. I told Tim about it. So I don't know what happens. I don't know. I plugged it in. That's all you're supposed to do. There's no thermostat on it. You just plug it in, put it around the bucket, and let it go. But there's so many yeasts out out now, and I I learned from these guys, and you guys can correct. Dry yeast. If you're gonna homebrew, dry yeast. Yeah. Unless there's something real specialty, or you found something that you I need. still can get you dry yeast that'll make it will yeah. make it work. Mm-hmm. Dry yeast is our thing. I mean, that's. Well, I think Jim, you were probably uh, all liquid up until I ruined you. It depends. Yeah, I mean, I was always a uh, you know SO five for pretty much every oh, beer I made for 15 years. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't really experiment a whole lot with yeast back in those days, but Man Grove Jack came out. I mean, they've got so many great. <clears throat> Yeast now, it's it's crazy. Yeah. Yeast, well, yeast makes a lot of the, yeast mm-hmm. makes the beer. If you don't get yeah. the proper yeast in the beer style, it, it could make or break the beer. Yep. Correct? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, you could do all the green bill and the hops you want, but if you got the improper yeast, you're gonna ruin it. Mm-hmm. Yep. Or have the right yeast in the wrong temperature. Oh right? yeah, 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 right? yeah. One of the biggest things, and, and these guys will test it. You know, Jim has temperature control. Yeah. Chuck has temperature control, and I do. And that was one of the biggest things to make you a better brewer is temperature control over your fermentation. Mm-hmm. And so you have a, a tank you stick them in, like a keyser or something? I have, that- a, I have a freezer. Just a, it, uh, have an ink, ink bird controller on it that controls the cold side. On the, For the hot side, I have a reptile bulb in there, which is just a black bulb mm-hmm. that just emits heat. And yeah, you got a temperature on that. keeps it at 60 something Whatever degrees. one I want to set, plus or minus one degree. Yeah, it's just I think that's going to be my next. Yeah. I mean, I just converted the keg kegerator over to the dual tap so I can put uh, the corny kegs on it. I had a heck of a time getting them ball locks on the kegs. <laughs> I had to actually tap it down to oh. get it. To get it, I couldn't push them on. So I was over there at Lancaster, and he said, "Well, you need some." keg lube i'm like that anal, helps yeah. anal lube i got some of that at the house <laughs> i'm just kidding <laughs> but he said no. over here buddy <laughs> can we can, can we snip you guys that are all, of, can we snip that part out of there <laughs> <laughs> but he said that'll help because he said don't tap them down so it was the only way it was going on i had to get it down to get the carbonation into it so i've never kegged so this will be an interesting thing we'll see how it works but i've been i've been thinking about doing a keyser so i can we can brew more yeah. Cause I can't. I'm only putting two in there. I can't put more than two in it. I just put another collar on a keyser in the garage. I have one for 
charging kegs that I can fit like five kegs in it. And then I have one out in a brewery that has three, and I have one in the house that's got five on it. That's wow. just dumb. I think all of us are. I don't know if they're home brewers anymore. I, no, think. I don't think so. I think they, no. they, that ship has sailed. Yeah, <laughs> we better drink a beer on that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's get into our next tasting here. So, uh, Mr. Uh, I think, Jim, this one is one of yours. It is. Yeah. So, this is a uh, key lime pie sour. Oh, boy. Um, so one of, one of the, one of the, my favorite styles that I like to brew are kettle sours. Um, you know, so I use a, I just do a basic mash, um, you know, do a, like a, a two or three day lacto rest at like 85 degrees and then, um, you know, finish it out with, with a boil and, you know, regular recipe. But, um, so and then we, did you bring more of this? I'm sorry. I brought Go two. Ahead. I brought two cans. I don't know if we poured them all out or not. But so over there, you're saying you kettle sour. So you're souring it by bringing the temperature up to le- in a certain yeast. Is that how you sour the beer? So I use uh, the Omega Lacto Blend. Um, so basically, you do your mash. Um, I do like a, just a quick five minute boil, uh, just to sanitize, sterilize everything, um, and then chill it down to about ninety pitch the lacto blend in there and then my grain father or my brazilla whichever i can hold it at 90 degrees until i'm ready to like finish it off and it usually takes a couple of days for it to actually sour the beer um you know i I have a ph meter so i i check and see where it's at and all of that stuff um and then when it's when i'm ready um then i bring it back up to boil and finish it like a normal beer that's pretty cool Cheers. cheers You said it's where the F are my keys. Correct. I don't believe he said it like that. <laughs> I think there's another word that it gives in there. I'm not sure. Well, fill me in. It starts with an F and ends with a K. <laughs> Do I'm oh. the only one that's ever going to have oh, to fire and say fire it? Tr- <laughs> Babe, ends, starts with an F and ends with a K. Fire truck. <laughs> Is right. that it? Where the fuck are my keys? Is that yes, what you guys have? Where the fuck are my keys? <laughs> Key lime pie sour. Oh, I get that. Oh, I that's a I want nice. It because the smell is so awesome. That is a nice freaking aroma. That is. That is so good. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's a fun beer. That's good, Dave. Yeah. Oh, wow. It's more in here, but it's going over here. That is, <laughs> hey, Dave's got take, a secret stash. Take that because he is not a sour guy. He's not. He yeah. does not like sours. I, I don't. I do. First, first uh, few sours that I've had. Didn't agree, and it sort of like set a tone, mm-hmm. and, and it just, uh, you know. But I, lately, I've been having a few sours that have actually been good. Yeah, you know? yeah. I mean, that's tough. I mean, you know, the sour style is a very divisive style. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, some you know like it or hate it. You know, the, you know. But I, I think we we try to focus on you know keeping keeping the flavors well. My wife over there loves to put the flavors together. Um, there you go. So uh, you we know. may have to get her to sit in here. <laughs> I offered her right there. Yeah, we should have put a chair over there. I'd get another you know. chair. We could put one put over here. We'll have to there. squeeze yeah. them in. But <laughs> this is this is uh, very good. I get basically all three of the flavors: the key lime, the vanilla, mm-hmm. and, and the graham cracker yep. out of it. Very good, and it's, it's not overly tart. It's not. No, it's not. So, what's your ABV on this one? Uh, this one, these usually level between five and five and a half. Okay. Yeah. So I think this one's probably right in the middle, five and a quarter, something like that. You got you got a, a six to of this in your in your fridge. There's not much left of it. Ah, oh, damn! I, I brewed a double batch of it this year. Uh, SJ was talking about being in Pittsburgh for the homebrew con, um, and I so I I brewed two a double batch on my BZ65, um, and so I got two kegs out of it, and one keg went to homebrew con, and then. Uh, you know, we had another one kind of, we've just been sitting on, it's been in the kegerator and, you know, we sip on it a little bit and, you know, just enjoy it. You know, it, it just sits there on your palate and it, and it's so good. Thanks. <laughs> I think it's it, part it of the, the kettle sour process, I yeah. think is why that makes it easier. It, it's for sure. You're not, you're dropping your pH down to what, like maybe three, five, somewhere in that. Uh, yeah. It's it, it lands usually between two, eight and three, one. Um, you know, two eights getting into the real tart arena, but um, yeah, we we kind of settle, you know, kind of right around that three O pH. Well, sp- you're speaking of pH, and mm-hmm. I kind of know what it is, but how do you regulate your pH in a home brew? 
So, I mean, the, when, um, like I mentioned before, when we do the, the lacto blend that we toss in there after we, after we mash out, um, you know, we kind of let that set and that's a lactobacillus bacteria in there, um, that basically like, you know, yeast consumes sugar and spits out alcohol. Um, lacto basically spits out lactic acid, you know, so that's what acidifies the beer, lowers that pH, you know, because once you come out of the mash, you're usually probably somewhere in the high fours, maybe the low fives. Um, and then it takes a couple days of that lactobacillus doing its thing to, to bring it down. Um, so I just, I check it. Usually, I, I know that I've, I've done it so many times now that usually two to three days is the sweet spot. Um, and sometimes it's schedule permitting, <laughs> you know, like I couldn't do it today, so it's going to sit for a third day. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it kind of comes in real nice there. And I, I really love the profile of that, um, that lacto blend. I've, I've tried the Philly sour yeast, which is kind of a shortcut. Mm-hmm. Um, and they do make a good beer. Um, but it's just to me, it's never quite that same flavor profile. Is, is this the only sour you make or have you tinkered with other sours? Um, I have a base recipe that is my that's what I always brew. And that's why I know it's always going to be between like five and five and a half percent. Um, you know, and then we just change up the flavors. Well, that keep that one going. That's really good. As a Thanks. kettle sour, it, it's all <laughs> kettle sour for a home brewer is the way to go too. Cause you're not, you're not, not messing up any of your equipment. Right. Yeah. Cause once you let it set, he's going to fire his kettle back up and he kills the yeast. At that point. Right. So now he moves on to his brew day, so there's no contamination, so you don't have to worry about that. So that whole thing of, you know, keep your you know, your sour equipment over here, you know, away from everything, that's... I was really going to ask that. Yeah, that's we've heard that a few times. Yeah, it's we've heard that in... Um, Good and bad. Yeah, yeah. Like when I got the stuff for my wife, uh, we got a, a, a bucket just for cider because he, he said don't do an IPA in it especially. Yep. It'll... it'll It'll hold some f- in that plastic. I guess it'll hold some uh, flavors around some pores in there. Yeah, yeah. So, so it says cider on it. But so you're saying that some of that's myth, just in how you keep clean and yeah, yeah. Some of it's myth. You know, a lot of it. I'll, I'll be honest. I used to be a homebrew su- store owner. It's just to buy more equipment. You know. <laughs> So Tricks hard. of the trade. Tricks it, of the trade. It is what it is. Yeah, I mean, it, it's the process. Because if you are doing a, a traditional mixed fermentation sour, then, yeah, you're going to oh, end yeah. up with, you know, Brettanomyces, you know, uh, Pediococcus bacteria in the, you know, and no matter how much you clean, you know, it's going to be really hard to get that stuff out of there. That's why they say once you do something like that in, you know, especially like a plastic bucket that's got all those little micro scratches in it, sure. you know, that stuff mm-hmm. hides everywhere in there. Um, but, yeah, the kettle soured because of the process of boiling after you've done the acidification part, you know, then you don't have that problem. Uh, speaking of full-time jobs, everybody still work full-time jobs? We'll start with Steve since we went start with Jim. What's your full-time job? Other so, than the old home brew supplies. Yeah, yeah. I always kept my full-time job through that even as well. Um, so I'm a um, logistics manager out at Menasha Package and Yield Stride Printing. Okay. So that's that's my full-time gig. Okay. Retirement in the future? Or? Oh, I told the wife, when I turn 60, which is only three years away, I do not intend to work. Okay. So I'm she, gonna be she, brewing more. <laughs> she she needs to step her game up. Oh, <laughs> I've been saying that for years. Yeah, yeah. Do I need to edit that out? <laughs> it might it might be helpful. No, she's she's a good egg. Yep. Chuck. Uh work at Harley Davidson. Okay. Been there may be twenty eight years. A friend of mine just retired from there. Yeah. Our old neighbor worked there. August yeah. August I'm done. So what do they make over there? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not going to. Uh, Never mind. I'm not going there. I'm not going there. So I'm teasing. You, I'm teasing. But so yeah. you're you're retiring this year? Yes. Oh, wow. I'll be 62 in August, and I'm done. Oh, congratulations. Enough. Thank oh, you. Yeah, there friend, you go. A friend yeah. of mine, Wendy, just retired after Wendy Yep. Mm-hmm. After 32 Wendy. years or 33, 30, I think. Yeah, somewhere around there. 32, yeah. 33 So years, congratulations. Right. Yep. Thank you. So uh, Mr. Welder, is that what you still do or not? I, I do not. Well, part-time. Uh, so I'm a facilities manager for CBRE. Currently, I work over at Johnson Controls, taking care of their building. But yeah, you guys talking about retirement makes me feel a lot younger. <laughs> <laughs> we paid our yeah. dues. Yeah. Let, yeah, let me tell you. Dues. Let me tell you, Adam. It 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 will go quick. 
It doesn't seem like it when you're young, but my mom used to say, don't wish it. It goes fast enough. And holy shit, I'm in my mid-50s already. Yeah. It's like, where did that time go? It yeah. starts as simple as I can't wait for the weekend and then the next year and then the next decade. Mm-hmm. It's quick. And then we'll all be like as old as Dave. <laughs> yeah, thanks. <laughs> you know, I, I would have bet 50 bucks that was coming up. <laughs> <laughs> you would have lost. It, pretty much every episode. Uh, Jim, what do you still do? Uh, so I work as a software developer. Okay. Um, so I, I write code for um, you know arts and culture organizations that need to send email marketing communications and all that kind of fun stuff. So. Well, I kind of I kind of figured you did something that was intelligent because the way you just talked and described this and that, it's, <laughs> I was feeling stupid. <laughs> and it's not the first episode, and it's been quite recent. I've been feeling a lot stupid talking to everybody. It's like holy moly. <laughs> code yeah yep. you and dave got that same thing i mean he he's a electrical guy too and well you used to work for xerox. I, xerox xerox oh yeah i worked for a xerox contractor back in the late 90s working on small volume copiers it was mm-hmm. one of my favorite jobs actually i love tinkering so yeah you know, it really fit my my skill set yeah it was interesting wasn't it <laughs> <laughs> customer service right that was that was, yeah. that was the fun part right sure yeah <laughs> I worked for I worked for them a while, a while. So yeah, we had to wear suits. I don't know if you had to wear suits. We were just business casual, so yeah, no, like, we weren't. Yeah, suits, <laughs> <laughs> polos, and khakis. We were modeled after the IBM group. Yeah. Oh yeah, there you go. <clears throat> Old school. Yeah. Well, we mm-hmm. worked on the mainframe. Oh yeah, we worked on the big frames. ones. Yep. Mm-hmm. So you you honestly have to be a tinkerer to be a home brewer. Yeah. Like. Like all your all your equipment, you're going to tinker with. I mean, Chuck's Chuck's latest advancement with his wash table and well, and kind of yeah. you know that yeah. we had at Oktoberfest. Like, yeah. yep. and portable the, oh, glass that's washer. Right, that mm-hmm. thing that's, is yeah, awesome. Portable glass washer. Uh, well, let's let's talk about what are you talking about? We go to festivals and you know <clears throat> somebody brings up a glass that they just had a stout in and they want whatever they want an ipa and you want to rinse it out you want to rinse it out so well we used to pretty much all of us used to bring a cooler with Mm -hmm. us and just you know rinse it out for them so i took a a regular glass rinser and rigged it up stuff i had at home and yeah made a it's portable yeah Mm -hmm. put a keg of of water in it and co2 and yep He's making it sound way it. simpler than what it is. <laughs> yeah. That thing is that it's, thing is badass. Just let uh, me tell you, it, and I it's use a it cabinet. It's I cool. mean, that's, you know, I use it down in the basement when somebody comes over. It's just yeah, you easy guys to clean the glass. So. Made up the like you were yeah, you have we're the used to were the, two, were the yeah, first one to do them, it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Were the, the one that sits on top of the keg. Yeah, so I, yeah, it's like every iterate because I started with a mm-hmm. you know just a basic uh, you know glass rinser setup, and then like every iteration has taken it to the next level. So Adam's <laughs> like, oh, I rigged up this thing that like sits perfectly on top of a corny keg, and he probably you know, I, welded it. Yeah, he did, oh, yeah, and yeah, I got yeah. him to make me one. So <laughs> now I got one, and then Chuck takes it up a notch, yeah. and you know builds a whole rolling station. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'm still bringing my little three gallon cooler. <laughs> but it's those little things. Like you go to a festival. And you've got somebody that's beside you, and they're pouring beer. And then yeah. somebody else comes up to you, and they're like, "Oh, well, thanks for rinsing." Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was yeah. like, really, really appreciate it. Yeah. I was gonna say because it, that even though we were out there, that was like the first festival I ever went to. Oh, um, and I didn't get around to everybody, and um, nobody. I I didn't get to your guys' tables, but nobody. You go. For, all right, fill me up. Doesn't matter what's in it to me. I mean, sure. yeah, you're going to take away from what the beer's supposed to be if there's other flavors in it. So, kudos. Man, I mean, man. that's pretty cool. So little things. Yeah. And, yeah. Pres- and presentation. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That's the big thing. <laughs> oh, Dave's Dave's already refilled that key line. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice. Uh, so, I mean, as far as the festival goes, when you guys go out, you're not setting up individual tables. You're going out as scabs together. Or do you still set up individual tables? You know, that sounds funny, the way you said that. They're going out as scabs. <laughs> <laughs> That's that catch-22 on yeah, the name. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, we've, we've done both. Uh, you know, it, it, it kind of in the earlier days when we started doing it, it was we were representing the club as a whole, which we're still doing, you know, but we get to represent our individual brands at the same time, you know. So we're, we're clustered together, but we have individual tables. That's cool. Yeah, it's a mix. Like, when, when we do Yorktoberfest, they... It's funny because they they call it Scabro. 
Cab <laughs> Pro. That's nice. So when we set up, we're, we're going nice. to we're gonna have to do the, we'll have to get the little live thing on the phone and go, hey, we're going down Scab Row right oh, yeah. now. There you go. Yep. I got, well, I'm, were, I'm packing. I'm going down Scab Row. <laughs> yeah. we, Is that the one where we're going to take the microphone where we had the, the you know, we could point to yeah. the, yeah. you know, yeah. we, yeah. Yeah. We, you know. The laser burn. <laughs> the one year, I mean, the, fir the first year I did your Oktoberfest, we stayed, and this was, this was right after COVID. So it was, mm -hmm. it was kind of like a, hey, let's come back to the things that we really like to do. And we were five or six people deep oh my. Oh my, for the yeah. first two hours. Yeah. And my wife is like, is this really what this is like? And I was like, I hope so. This is amazing. I love doing this. <laughs> And just pouring beer, and then eventually running out, and you're like, "Ooh, I get to go sample yeah. everything now too." One of our one of our things when we do festivals is who who blows the keg out first. That's, okay, that's kind of our little in you know our competition <laughs> internal <laughs> competition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and I think we've all won that one. Yeah, that happened line. quick. This last October yeah. fest, last yeah. one you were or your October fest. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, we we blew through the beer. Yeah, we we were all out. Real we were quick. all out. Yeah, early. And when you go to these festivals, you taking one, two, depending on what you guys want to do. A lot of times we're taking multiple. Like each of us have jockey boxes and stuff. So I think e we're all you have two, two, two. two. Yeah. so we're all two. like two, two, two. So we'll, we do coordinate what we're doing because again we don't want to all we step we, on each other's toes, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Well, that we just it's it helps promote the club to be able to have that variety. You know, right? So we want to we want to have a nice span. the The first brew kids we did, we did not coordinate. <laughs> so we had seven IPAs. Oh. You know, and it was like people were coming up to our table and they're going, "I'll have a well, you had well a I guess I'll have an IPA." Uh -huh. you know? I'll have the hazy. Steve had a pilsner. I did, so yeah, you had I did. a pilsner. So that I had was one the, different. That was a, you know, one different so. thing we had. But that was a lot of fun. Brew Kids is a blast, you know, because you know, the Crocodile guys, they do it for the brewers. Yeah. You know? Right. And and that's a lot of fun. And they, and they, they we told, we noticed they had a lot of fun. Hell, they had Nerf guns out there. Yeah. Too. Well, that was yeah. fun. And I know Jason and Mick said they're still finding Nerf darts all over their property. <laughs> so. In the garden. Yeah. Um, membership. Cost? I mean, what's the prerequisite? I mean, how do you become a member? Come to a meeting. Come to, meeting. Come to a meeting. Come to a meeting. Sit know, in the back. See, don't put your hand up so you become president and vice president. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, look we, look we, us up on Facebook. Yeah. I mean, that's that's we do most of our communication through there. We have yearly dues, uh, thirty dollars a year okay. for a single. Um, for a couple, it's thirty five dollars. If you want your wife to join, she's uh, only, only worth five dollars. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> the only the only thing they don't have voting rights or that sort of thing, but they're still a club member. So okay, you know. So that's and the, I mean, come, come, come out to a meeting. Oh, yeah. It, yep. Like come out yeah. to, in fact, come out to a year's worth of meetings. See what we're about. Yeah. Now, I, I'm surprised we haven't said it to this point, but our, you know, our slogan is fermentation of all. You know, yep. Everything, everything fermented. fermented. Yeah. Everything's all fermented. Yep. fermentation. Yep. yep. So we'll have a firm, we'll have a, a, a meeting and it will go from Mark does a sourdough and, and certain things. And then it will go from a beer, and we'll talk about salsa. And mm -hmm. like, it doesn't yeah. have to just be beer. Yeah. That's pretty cool. So anybody can really join. Anybody yeah, absolutely. Can join. Whether they're a brewer or not. Yep. Yep. And, it's, it's, and, and our meetings are very educational. I mean, you know, we, you know, we get together. We like to sample everybody's beer, but mm -hmm. that's not always what it's about. I mean, oh, we that enjoy doing that. We enjoy doing that part of it. But you know, it's it's you know, like like we said earlier, what are you doing? You know, and and. Uh, what problem we, we yeah we mm -hmm. share all kinds of information it, 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 it is educational too so i know you mentioned earlier steve used to have uh brewing days like mm -hmm. educational is mm -hmm. that still going on or yeah so we like to try to get together periodically and do brew days yeah we'll get together like over at my place or chucks or down to gyms or whatever um we'll also do the um like the big brew day you know, so we do. Some of us have internet presence. You know, so we'll we'll join in on that stuff as well. Uh, Big Brew Day, National Homebrew, you know, their days and stuff like that. So uh, we try to do that as much as possible. And that's a conglomerated effort as far as what beer you're going to brew, or is it just everybody's coming here to brew? Uh, depends on what we're doing. We've done it already. We're um, like the one time we were over at Rich's and we we brewed. No, we're at Mars. Mars. We did a Mars. Yeah, because you know. we have a couple guys that have big systems. You know, like Mark has a one-barrel system, and Rich is... Rich has that, uh, it's like a 
25, 20 yeah. gallon yeah. brewery, uh, easy brewery. You're talking about Rich and Chris? No, 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 no. no. this okay. is another fellow in our okay. uh, Rich Horn, who's in our in our club. He has a brew easy, and, and what we did was is we had one recipe, right? And we brewed the same recipe on both systems. So we ended up with uh, we had fifty gallons. Fifty that gallons, day. Yeah. yeah. So that's a lot of ten beer. of us were able to take five gallons yep. each home and do what we wanted to with it. And from that point, brought it back. Yeah. So we do a lot of that kind of stuff again, like the, the chopped. You know, like you know, you'll say, oh, yeah, we'll put a couple of these ingredients in, and then have at it, guys. You know, mm-hmm. do whatever you want. And then we like to get back together and taste them. And we've done like the yeast experiments, where we'll brew the same beer, everything's the same, hops are all the same, but we'll, we'll all use a different yeast and see how it comes out. Or right. the same or, yeast, but at different temperatures. Correct. Oops, I'm yep. sorry. Jim and I did that. Mm-hmm. And we brewed. Uh, we both used the same yeast, and I ferment. I lagered it. He didn't, and it, it was a different taste. It was. You know, That's or, pretty cool. Or hop experiments. Well, yeah. Do the same beer. We'll use everybody use a different hop and try to see what. Uh, Sounds what like you need are, to have so. a beer like a scabs experiment experimental series or something. Yeah. We could do mm-hmm. that. I mean, yeah. every year we also join in. Trogues does the um, you know the homebrew competition mm-hmm. up there where they'll do a thing of wort. You know, you take it back. Um, Independent down in Maryland did it. We were part of that as well. You know, so they're cool. There's cool events if you look out there, you know, and and they really test your uh, your abilities and stuff. It's that's, cool. That's cool. Now this home brew con, I think I've read about it as well. I mean, is this is like one of the big ones, or is this something that? So it's National Home Brew. Okay, it's the AHA. It's held at. They usually go West Coast, West Coast, East Coast, Middle. Now how it goes, Jim. Uh, I think so. Yeah, it it, it varies because what they, um, you know, we did uh, New England a couple years ago. Yep. Um, and then they didn't have it, and then it was online, and then this past year it was Pittsburgh. It's gonna you be know, so they didn't Diego, swing back, but San, yeah, Diego San Diego this Diego coming year. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so we went up since it was in Pittsburgh. And I did. We actually did Rhode Island was two years, ago, mm, three years three. ago. Three years ago, we went up and uh, we served up there. That was fun. That was a good time. Um, then we went up as a group, as a club for Pittsburgh, and we served at Homebrew Con. And okay, that was that was a blast. I That's mean, fun. I, I highly suggest you know as a home brewer being part of home of of you know, the HA, you know, and uh, check out uh, Homebrew Con. It is a drunk fest. <laughs> <laughs> We're all about that. It, it's a drunk. Fest. It's a lot of fun. It really is. Club I mean, night was. I mean, club club night to me was that was. That's the epitome of what every home brewer or anybody that loves beer just loves about what they do. Right. Because it was people coming together to share beer that they made. And whether it was on a train of kegs it's crazy. that was driving around so pouring crazy. beer for you or you're pouring for beer for other people, like it was fun. So was, we were a uh a tiki bar. Yep. Yep. I did see that. It said something fermentation and flip flops. Yep. Is that what your flip-flops. bar was? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was our theme. You know, so it's crazy. I mean, it's it's absolutely insane. It's so much fun. That's pretty cool. Um, maybe we'll have to look into that sometime. Has I highly recommend an AHA membership. I mean, it's so worthwhile. It's not really all that expensive. You know, depending on which options you get, it's only like forty bucks a year. But there's so many discounts that you can get at local breweries that participate. That I've never had a year that it didn't pay for itself. So, it's a really great benefit. And, and not to plug them this year, but they, you get a free book this year. Yeah, there's I, that I think too. SJ had mm-hmm. posted yeah. that one, but yeah, you get a free book this year. Mm-hmm. Oh, cool. Well, I'm I'm getting a little thirsty. I mean, with, from what we're what I've heard is we got several beers to try on this episode. <laughs> yeah, the other thing is that home brewer. Uh, there's there's lots of lots beer of all beer. the time. <laughs> now, the only other thing before we get into this, as far as you guys can't sell it. No, nope. So it doesn't it doesn't eat at you that hey man, I, I'm gonna have to. I'm losing money on this, or this is just because this is for the fun and the hobby of it. You get over that factor, I think, yeah. right? Well, yeah. a lot of times with the the events, that's kind of our entry fee to get in. So we're going into these events, we're serving, so it doesn't cost us anything to get Okay. In. So that's – now, we're spending a lot of money on beer, you right. know, right. versus a, a $35 ticket, you know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, it's for the fun of it, and to get people's. I mean, you get the reaction. Sure. You get to give uh, like you know, we as home brewers, we tend to uh, will dissect our beers a little bit, you know, just because we're trying to help each other out, right? But it's really cool to get you know Joe Public to try your beer and he look at it and say, "Hey, man, this is good." 
and we've heard that story before. It's like mm-hmm. the, you know, like or Dover Brewing and stuff like that. They have went to these festivals and mm-hmm. you know CNC Chris and Rich yep. Chisholm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Where can I get it? Yep. Well, where can not I buy yet. It? Where can I buy it? Yep. Yeah. And, yep. Uh, we get that all the yeah. time, yeah. all the time. But you don't have that strong itch right now to open that brick and mortar, no. right? <laughs> we, we, a lot of us are fortunate enough to know a lot of folks that are in the industry, so we're looking at it from the back door, going, "Yeah, that's cool, but <laughs> right. I don't think so." Yeah. <laughs> There's so many things you have to do right. Oh, I mean, yeah. that's locally for these breweries to be open. I, my hats off to them. Tremendous <laughs> amounts of energy that goes into them. But I would have to look at like I would mean my food would be have to be perfect. Mm-hmm. And then you're getting, you're getting a whole new ups with with food everything. I mean, right. nah. and I would want my beer to be perfect. Yeah. Like I I would come into the place and if it was a Wednesday in the middle of February and the beer wasn't right, I would be upset as if it was you know opening day and it's just hotter hotter than heck outside and people are pouring in. Like I would just want I'd be. I'd be a perfectionist on it. Yeah. The other thing about it is you're going to lose your weekends. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. You'll lose your weekends. Nights, oh, yeah. weekends. Oh, yeah. Many hats. I've yep. been told yep. my Many wife at, at, at that as well. So yeah. the, no professional for me. It's, nah. it's pretty neat, though. Everybody has their own little thing, like, you know, this brewery. Everything's locally purchased, bought. Mm-hmm. Um, this guy's got his own hop farm, or, or I should say location. There's a lot of women involved now. And so everybody has their own little unique thing, and it, it's very tasteful. Uh, yeah. it's <laughs> very tasteful. I like one, that. one of the things I, I've always liked about us in particular is, and, and you mentioned it, our wives are all part of this as well. Yeah, you know, they're 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 de- you know they're partners in what we do. You know, and, and That's you know means, that means everything. Yes, and absolutely. You need that backing. Mm-hmm. Well, speaking of tasting, I think this one's coming from you, Chuck, right? No, this is Adams. Oh, this is Adams? Adams. Yep. This is Adams. This is Adams. This is Ted's Tiki Hut. Ted's mm-hmm. Tiki Hut. This is the third rendition of this one. Third rendition, so. I keep changing the hops on it because the profile changes a little bit. And, and this is a hazy. It's a hazy. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Ted's Tiki Hut. Ted's Tiki Hut. So this is my third rendition of this one. Uh, it's sitting about 6.8%, uh, about 20 IBUs, not real, real bitter, um, but the hops kind of come forward. Uh, I do get a lot of that hop, a little citrus, and right. maybe yeah. some grapefruit notes Great. on that on that yep. aroma. Yep. So I used, uh, I, I'm really fond of Waiiti. Here recently, some of the New Zealand hops that are coming out are really neat to kind of tinker with. And then with Talis, uh, Josh from our club has kind of introduced that one a lot. And um, that's he baby. does a wonderful IPA with that yeah. Talus. I'm telling you what, you mentioned the Wahidi and the Talus. First time we had that was uh, with uh, Irina when she was brewing with Winding Pad. Wine, right. yep. That yep. Talus brew. Yes. It was a very good IPA. And Lydian Stone was talking about these new Wahidi and um, New England, New Zealand and Australian hops that are they're fabulous. So this is very good. Thank you. By the way. There is there is so many new hops coming out. Um, the one that we were talking about, or one that I've been talking about, was most. It's a it's a Czech hop. There's hops that are coming out of from the Czech Republic now. There's hops that are coming out of, um, you know, All Eastern over. Europe. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. There's some really interesting hops coming out. So it's and as home brewers, you only brew small batches. Mm-hmm. Good to play. Yeah, and that's this is a very good combination, and. Um, even though that has a lot of that grapefruit note in, which would more reminiscent of a West Coast, this is very good. I mean, I think the combination was real smooth. Thank you. I like that it's it, that it's uh, clean tasting. It doesn't have that uh, the lact or the um, oh the milk. Yeah, lactose. Lacto- yeah, lactose yeah. in it. Yeah. You know, it, it's not. It's that medial mouthfeel. And we were talking about yeast, so. Guess wise, yeast wise, what do you think I use yeast on this? Oh four. Oh five. Oh six. <laughs> oh seven. <laughs> do I hear no call? Going to five. Uh, it's not really. I don't know. I probably would have gone with a a British, uh, like a, a British yeast on that one. So I use Kvike 
Ooh. At 70 degrees. I was going to say that. M12. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a man from, yep, It yeah, was the stuff yeah. that I got okay. from, from out at HomebrewCon. And I... And, and that's the great thing about home brewing. Stupidly did not buy ingredients when I should have and had all the ingredients for my IPA and was like, well, this is what I got. So the first one I brewed, and I don't know if I stumbled upon something or what, but I've used this yeast now three different times, and I've gotten a real clean New England IPA clean. at 70 degrees. Mm. So, so kind of like a chop, like you were saying. Mm. Yeah. Happy accident. Yeah. Did, what, this is what I got. I'm going to make something. Right. Now, when you're saying this is the third rendition, did you do, did you, was it drinkable the first two or? First two were drinkable. The first one, the hops just didn't come through. Um, in between the first and the second, water profile, which again, these guys will tell you, better beer starts with better water. Yeah. And water profile seems to have upped everybody else's game. So my first thought was, well, I'm not going to get left behind. <laughs> and now, do you, now, are you getting, or do, have you all had your water tested? Is that what you're talking about? And got a reverse osmosis system to compensate? Some of these guys do. I'm, yeah, I'm York Water, so you can get their report online. You know, right. And York Water is actually pretty good water. And we're Dover Water, so we're going to have a lot of limestone in ours. It's all the same. Yeah. Yeah, we sit on the world's largest deposit of limestone just here in south central Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's going to affect everybody. And now well, what I, I did is I went and got uh, spring water because I'm like, all right, I'm going to take that in the heat. I'll just go get some spring water and just see how that works. Right. So, right. That's what I used to do, just go get yeah. spring water. Mm -hmm. yeah. What were you going to say, Dave? No, I was just astounded the world's worst no, <laughs> largest largest not yeah. the worst but no. the largest yep deposit of limestone. deposit of limestone it just I went makes from, you wonder i just went from spring water to using water that was in out of the faucet and my beer went downhill and then after that, it was i was going to a spring that was over behind dallas town a lot and, of people go to that one right use that for a while and then after talking to Jim and reading some books and 9,000 hours online, RO system, you know, in the mail. So mm -hmm. it just, it's part of the, the brewing equipment. You got to have it. So no hose water, right? No hose water. <laughs> that's good enough to drink out of. Out of a hot hose sitting in the driveway yeah. in the summertime. I think that's why my immune like system's so pretty good. I turned out okay. Yeah. yeah. I'm still here. <laughs> Well, gentlemen, I, this is going to be a first because we normally do only four. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so when you, but you invited the <laughs> home brewers is what you did. All I can say, it's fucking awesome. Yeah, I like <laughs> this. This is really nice. I like it. I like it. Again, he's really not an IPA or a sour guy. So, guys, you guys are doing something yes. right. You're hitting Dave's notes here. Yeah. I, the, the beer, too. Yeah. No, I was talking about. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was. I was actually talking about as many guests as we have here. This, yeah, is, this really, is this is really nice. I like this. You know, this is uh, this is pretty cool. Um, who else are we going to think about? You guys conglomerate. I mean, you got to collab on stuff. Mm -hmm. Have you collabed with professional brewers on the side as well, or not there yet? Uh, yeah, we've talked with folks. I I've had the opportunity to work through. I had brewed. Uh, Modest Brewing, you know, out in uh, Minneapolis has brewed our beers. Had three. Oh, that's so in Minneapolis mm -hmm. from here. Wow. Yeah. As a home brewer, you had your recipes brewed. Yep. That's wow. awesome. So that's I pretty think, cool. And a lot of that comes with some of the competitions. You know, you, you can do that. So, yeah, you know, Chuck with, with Falconer's with, Prayer yeah, down at Scrubby's. He did yep. Falcon. Yeah. Falconer's Prayer. And that was basically your you guys has collabed on that recipe, or was that your uh, that recipe? Was, that, there's a whole story behind that recipe. That recipe started from SJ. He had it on. He had a book in the store, and that's where I got it from. And then I have changed it over three or four different times to what it was this last time. And, and uh, Emery left left him try it, and he's like, "I got to do something with this." I said, "Well." You know, whatever. Here it is. My recipe book's open. You know, so uh, we got together. He did it. So, how many recipes do you guys all have? Oh, <laughs> That's a loaded um, question. Yeah. <laughs> I got a binder yeah, like that yeah, thick. Well, it's funny though when you first start brewing and you guys jump in on this, <clears throat> you think you need to use every ingredient yeah. there is known to man. You know, so mm -hmm. we would build these extravagant recipes. You know, and now I sit back and I'm like, I'm like two or three grains. Pops, 
you know, we've scaled them down so much. You don't need all that crazy stuff in them now. Unless you want to get funky. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you want to, you can, you know, type thing, you know, but to have three and four different crystal malts in a beer, why? Why? Yeah. 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 (laughs) Some of it, Chad, really doesn't do anything. Right. Yeah, like if you're adding four ounces of something, it's not going to bring too much to the party. No, no. But, boy, we thought it did back in the day, you know? Because that like like that that English IPA, the recipe I threw together, it's 11 pounds of two-row pale. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. And eight ounces of a, a Brius malt and crystal 40. 40. And a, another eight ounces of something else. So there's most of it's going to be the two, yeah. two row pale. Right. Yeah. There's a lot of folks that, like a lot of us homebrewers, have our favorite grains too. Like, you know, I'm a huge fan of Maris. I just love Maris mm-hmm. Otter. Um, my the the red that we had earlier that was Maris Otter that was the big that's what was that. in that that one I yeah. got yep the Maris Otter and it's just a wonderful malt you know and there's sometimes through the years where you'll you'll like I had a run there where I was doing rye my God I put rye in everything I've seen rye start to come back yeah. I've seen some rye stuff come out on See, some professional levels you'll find some of those grains that we just you know you love, you know, or a hop that you just really love, you know, to put in, you'll find a way to fit it into everything. Falconer Flight. Yeah. That's another one. Yeah. You know, and it's a blend of seven hops, you know, to make that hop. So, you know, as, as homebrewers, we get to like to play around with that stuff. I think that's cool. Uh, speaking of, I mean, we were sitting here talking before we sat back down here. Everybody's favorite beer. Commercial, uh, even your own or somebody else's. Have, what? Let's go around the table. Adam, we'll start with you. I, What's your favorite beer? Grand, What's your go-to? Grand Chimay Blue is will always it always have a place in my heart because it was the first beer that I ever had, and now I started off with a big one. Yeah, yeah. But it was a Belgian strong ale that it, it just to me I tasted that and I'm like, yeah. Toss this Bud Light out the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll, toss, I'll toss the Bud Light out for a Coors Light. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just my opinion. But Belgian Strong, you go, that's, that's go my, big or go home, and, right? And, well, when I first started, and we had talked about that earlier, mm-hmm. when I first started, the bigger, the darker, the heavier, the blacker, that was my beer. Oh, yeah. Everybody looks at us like motor oil. Yep. God, it tastes so good, though. And the, the palate changes. Yep. Oh, yeah. It, it changes. And as a home brewer, it changes so much. Yeah. And these guys joked with me, oh, you'll be doing light beers in no time. And you see, I had an IPA, so mm-hmm. it just... Our palates have changed just doing this. Yeah, because um, I wouldn't have finished that IPA. No. Or, no mm-hmm. I'd have sniffed it and said, oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> you know, two years <laughs> ago, <laughs> two years ago, you, I wouldn't have never even... Sni- like you said, I wouldn't have never sniffed an IPA. Yeah. But my palate has changed. I'll drink it all now. And some of my favorite stuff, I'll grab a... If I don't want something heavy, I'm going to grab a light, like an IPA or maybe a sour. And go for the sour before I want to grab a barrel age or something Belgian strong, even though I love the Belgians, the quads, the, tri- the you know, the triples. You know, it's just, it is what it is. It, it's, it's awesome. Chuck, what's your favorite? Man, that's tough because I like it all. I do. I brew it all. Mm-hmm. I, I brew pretty much everything. Not so much New England's, but um, it would have to be. I'm not going to pick one. I'll say it. It's either going to have to be a West Coast or a Stout. So something, that's something that's West very Coast, opposite in the spectrum. A yeah, West yeah, Coast, but, yeah. But you something can, you can drink a Stout in August. You know, oh, yeah, yeah, baby. Heck with Hell those. yeah. I, I drink yeah. Stouts all. We drink yeah. Stouts all the time. That's right. Any beer can be a session beer if you yeah. just believe. That's <laughs> hey, they, it's, <laughs> it's not just meant for breakfast. Yeah, that would probably be my. T- yeah, I can't narrow it down really. <laughs> just your style. Just my style. Minnesota, probably. Wisconsin. It's always West Coast cold. Or nice Stout. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What about you, Steve? SJ, as they call you. So, uh, yeah, I'm just like these guys. We, we just brew everything. Uh, but I would have to go back to the beer that made me start homebrewing, and that was uh, Fat Tire. Mm-hmm. That's the beer that, that was what I would consider my first craft beer. Like nice amber. Yep. Yeah. Nice yeah. amber ale, and it was the first beer that, you know, that I cloned. Okay. You know, type thing. So uh, I would have to go with that. And of course, hams. My God, everybody's got to have hams. And <laughs> yeah, that's, that's 80s. Uh, 70s, 80s. It's sky it was blue coming. water. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jim, what about you? Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I can, you know, some of the early stuff that got me into craft beer in the first place, like Sierra Nevada Pale Ale, I was always going to have a, 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 good a nice place yeah. in my heart. Um, 
but uh, yeah, I mean, these days with uh, all the hazies that we drink, um, I think uh, Hot Butcher for the World out of Chicago um, has a really solid um, called Blazed, and Blazed. they do a double blaze, which is really good. Um, and then kind of anything from Sapwood Cellars is right in my jam these days, like right down in Maryland. You know, they're doing great stuff down there on par with Treehouse and all the other great. Yeah, I, you know, I haven't had breweries. any Treehouse, but that's a big name that's being tossed around. It. They're very well known. So, oh, man, they know mm-hmm. what they're doing. That's for sure. Um, well, so this is since this is the first, we have like five beers here today. <laughs> <laughs> After the fact. After the fact. So what's what's going to be our next one? I think this was the... It's, that's the English IPA. The, the English IPA. It's an English IPA, and uh, it's Magnum and East Kent's. And then uh, it's French oak chips in secondary. Oh, okay. So, and that's going to bring a different mouthfeel and different palate to it. Yeah, the, the 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 oak that French oak comes through. You get a little Steve's bit. Steve's had this before. Oh my God, I love <laughs> this, this beer. beer. I love so, this beer. It's like six six or six two somewhere oh. right around there. See, he had this oh. one tapped out in his basement, and you were you were getting ready to put it in a competition or whatever. No, right? I didn't. I didn't that's, enter it last that's year. My favorite so I far. Didn't, I, I didn't enter it last. I told year. him, like, dude, you got to no. enter this. This man. year, this I did. Is just so good. This year I did. So this will. This is going to be my next brew, an English IPA, mm-hmm. without the French oak tips, mm-hmm. and I can. I mean, I'm getting that hint of that oak at the back end. Yes. Mm-hmm. This yeah, is definitely. very good. What are you yeah, thinking, Dave? It's an IPA, and it's, it's different I- than the hazy. Yeah, it's an IPA. I I enjoy I enjoy a couple of IPAs, and I do enjoy some I, some of the IPA flavors, and um, it's a very good. I yeah. I, I kind of like it. You and, don't get the bitterness. Uh, no, you don't get that IPA that's, bitterness that's, from that. It, so. That's the key. I'm sorry, I didn't get up on my microphone, but I mean, and that's the key. This is the fact that I've had some IPAs that are very bitter. And they just left a bitter taste in your mouth. You know, excuse That's the very pun. Good. <laughs> but, <laughs> but think, uh, yeah, uh, this is not bad. Is I not think bad. people are getting they're getting used to the fact that you don't have to have a very large IBU number no. right. in order yeah. to have something that tastes good. No, right. it's, and it's where you place the hops. Right. Yeah. Yeah. If you're going to put them in the beginning, yeah, you're going to get that bitter beer. I was going to ask that. Yeah. yeah. It's all where you place them. Yeah, because mm-hmm. I think the recipe I put together, I'm only boiling. The East Ken at 60 minutes for mm. like a half ounce or an ounce, and then the rest of them are spread throughout the boil. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this this has a half ounce of Magnum at 60, and then everything is East Kent's like halfway through and probably flame out. Yeah, and Magnum's like, like uh, what, 16, yeah, 17? Yeah, I don't know what that was. Yeah, yeah. usually. Yeah, it's, it's, a very, it's usually big. Yep. Yeah, very it's, English, though. Yeah. It's like oh, very yeah. caramelly, yeah, that malty. Is, it is. That, that's it's, got Maris in it, right? Uh, Yes, that has yep. Maris in it. Yep. It's yes. yeah, can, you, you, like you just said, it's it's got a malty backbone to mm-hmm. it. It's like subtle and smooth, with that oak just finishing it off. And Very it's good. it's a recipe I found off of. Uh, I think more beer has the English IPA is, is where I originally got it from. Now I have changed some things over the course of time. But, and what uh, I've what I've gotten on is, I mean, there was beer smiths out there. I went with Brew's Father. That's where I have Brew's yeah, Father. Yeah. And what I liked about you, if you go up there in the upper right-hand corner, you select the style. Mm-hmm. And as you're adding it, it's showing you where you're mm-hmm. supposed to be at. Yeah. And it, the recipe I threw together, I was all in a green. Yep. I was yeah. like, yep. Dang, that's what you want. I'm fucking learning. Hey, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> and, and you can take, you go and Brew Father and find five or six different recipes and, and look at them and you can pick That's and choose kind and of what I did. This is kind of what, you know, you can narrow it down and make it your own. And so. I went out to that, uh, the main, who's the BHJCP or whatever the BJCP. BJCP. BJCP yeah. yeah. And looked at what their styles were and what they say is supposed to be in that style. Like yeah. this is the green bill that is a typical for this mm-hmm. style. Here's the hot bill. You know, the, that's kind of what I did. And I just started throwing stuff together. I'm like, okay, yeah. Let me just figure this out. BJCP is a great way to to get you know what's what's this beer supposed to be, right? So when you look into those guidelines, um, that's it's a bible, you know, to to follow on how to build a recipe. Yeah, I never thought I'd be doing an all grain batch. I just thought I'd be doing open up a box, pulling out the <laughs> recipe, putting the extract in the sink there to get warmed up to dump it. But now I, I, the all grains. It's fun. Oh yeah, it's and fun. It's, it's kind of like what's the worst that can happen, you know? By by taking a recipe and throwing it together, it might not be exactly what you want, but 
it's but, still drinkable beer. And you, you and the next time, it. the next time you go, okay, I'm not going to do this. I'm going to do this. And, right. and yeah, you can, you can just keep narrowing it down to where it's right where you want it. It's like I told these guys, I said, all right, come up with a, a recipe or a beer you want to brew and we'll put it together. Sure. If you can make tea, you can make beer. There you go. There it is. Yeah, but, but it the is. thing what he told is, me, is, that's what Steve told me if yeah. right from the beginning. If yeah. you can make tea, you can make beer. And that's what I tell people. Same yeah, but I had, I had a recipe, and I gave it to you. It had mayonnaise in it, but, I mean, you threw it. <laughs> I mean, you just threw it right back at me and told me, no way. You know, so. <laughs> Although, what did I hear today? Somebody said they put mayonnaise in their coffee. And I'm like, Ooh, are you no. kidding me? Mm. No, I'm not going to no, do that. No, not no, not going to do that. that but, hey, the, the, yeah, but... Sandy has a recipe where she puts butter in her coffee. That's, you know, I have heard that they forever. say that's yeah. really good for you, yeah. too. They put, yeah. She puts butter in her coffee. Yeah, yeah. I actually want to give it a try. It sounds yeah. good. Go for it. <laughs> A lot of Europeans. Bacon. If I'm putting put butter, I'm putting bacon. Put the bacon in the coffee. I'll <laughs> oh, just dump the egg in it, too. <laughs> yeah. they got uh, all in one cup. Right? Yeah, before, in a cup. Yeah, before long, you got a KBS. Yeah, there, you <laughs> go. there you go. Big time. Yeah. All right. Uh, military. Anybody been in the military? Nope. Nothing? Nope. Yeah. Nope, nope. We're not like you two guys. <laughs> I just thought I'd ask. I mean, I just thought I'd ask. Yeah, these two are jarheads. Huh? Well, actually, no. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, no, I'm no, sorry. No, I shouldn't no, have said that. No. You're not jarheads. I'm, uh, I apologize. No, like my friend no, says. Yes. No, my, my friend says, we were Army. Aren't <laughs> ready for the Marines yet. And I tell him to go <laughs> fuck himself. <laughs> <laughs> I have two grandkids that are in the Army. Yeah. So Ten, thank you for your service. Thank you. Thanks Thanks very thank much. you. Yep, so. Wonderful. I, you know, we're just going to keep drinking. What's going to be the next one, man? Let's get through these beers. It's, it's a I want to see Dave stumble out of here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is an enabler stout. Um, uh, is that the right? is Still kind of workshopping yes. the name, yeah. I think. <laughs> enabler stout. Yeah. No, no particular name on it Buns yet. and Wood is the stout. current working stout. title. That is good. Buns and Woods. 10%. So what's stout. The, what, what does the wood come from? Uh, it's... Yeah, I put some chips in it because I was trying to go for a barrel, nice barrel aged kind of oh, profile on it. That's didn't what the wood quite is. get there. I think I'm gonna throw some more in. I'm gonna say I, I do get some get like a barrel aged yeah. smell aroma mm -hmm. out of it so far. Mm. Cinnamon. Cinnamon. That's got that's really nice right char to it too. That's why cinnamon buns, buns and wood. I like buns. I mean, uh, yeah, it's like a okay. <laughs> I, won't, I won't even say a toast on it, but it's like a number two toast. Number, mm -hmm. like yeah, a, it's it's a medium toast. Oak yeah. cubes, um, man. That they were soaked in Maker's Mark for a couple weeks, and then they're talking the toast and, and pH levels, and <laughs> it's yeah. like talking to Derek Wolf with parts per million. Oh yeah, yeah. that's right. Uh, yeah. It's not like that. I've, oh my I've god, watched that one. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he left us yeah. back at the, oh, me too. the Chinese laundry. Me too. I was like, I, I watched that long. episode. Yeah, it was like, that is yeah, good. I don't know what he's talking about. Brett had another one of those moments. What the fuck just happened? <laughs> it's like, well done. Yeah. How do I even know how to brew? He yeah. had, yeah, he had quite a few figures oh, that yes. he, you know, he was yeah. throwing this, out there. This, this is, is a very good stout. Mm. I don't know, man. You, what are you saying? You need to do something different with the barrel age on it? Mm. Yeah, I just wanted a little bit more kind of. Wood flavor out of it, but I don't know. It would get it, it would get a little bit tannic. That yeah. tannic, yeah. I did, that it's got I that. It, to me, it's got that nice little barrel aged hint, mm -hmm. and along with that coffee flavor on the back end. It's super nice. Super. It's very good. I think the fact that like I mean we had these beer. I mean we brought them in cans. We took them out a while ago. I mean we've been sitting here you know a couple hours. Yeah. So I think it warmed up and now yeah. it's oh yeah it's really breathing. They're really yeah. bringing it through. Okay, that's what they say. A stout. The longer you let it sit out and you drink it at room temperature, which oh yeah, let it breathe. You're gonna know, Kevin. Overseas, room yeah. temperature is well is very well. Yeah, it's, yeah everything overseas. Well, I'll, room I'll plug a uh, there's a, there's a brewery out towards Reading. It's called Stampede. If you ever have your opportunity to get out there, he actually brews. There's only four beers ever that's going to be on tap. They're all hand pull, so they're English style hand pull type things. He brews on a system that's wood fired, wood fired, wood wow. fired. Wow. Yeah. So check out Stampede. Wow. You, you should get together. You know, have him for one of these things. Or wood whatever. fired. That's what? going to be hard to control. Actually, it's not. Yeah. I asked him. I said, so when you brew, how much wood do you go through? He's like, like three or four sticks, and that's it. Three or four sticks. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. The yeah. system is awesome. <laughs> it is so good. And his beers, one of the other things I like about it is he does 10-ounce pours, right? 
So you can go there and, and drink, you know, one of each of his beers and not have a problem driving home, you know, type thing. Until the police call you. Well, <laughs> they're smaller. Because you know, point like oh 0.08 doesn't take much anymore. Yeah, this is true. <laughs> this is true. It wow. almost has a barbecue. And I, I don't know if it's like the way that the wood chips are, it almost has a... It almost has a barbecue. Thank you. I I was going to say that, but I'm like, that don't sound right. Yeah, yeah. It smells Sounds like, like a good like, pairing. I hate now I'm in the mood for barbecue. It smells yeah. like Memphis. <laughs> yeah. Living in me. Memphis for a while, it smells yeah, like Memphis barbecue. I get that whiskey. I, I get that whiskey. I do get a little bit of that. that whiskey. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It yeah. tastes good. I mean, that it's is very good. good. And very you good. said it's at what, 10 points? It's a 10 percenter. 10 percent. Yeehaw, baby. 10 It does not drink like it either. I mean, that's kind of what started us down. I. And we've mentioned this several times. Is I, I bought a Boulevard variety pack barrel age a couple of years ago, range anywhere from 11 to 19.2. And then we got into the Bourbon County, no, Goose yeah. Island, Bourbon mm-hmm. County. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I got a went and bought everybody a, a bottle up there. There, yes, is at the 30th the anniversary, 30th, yes, 30th anniversary, yeah. yeah, which is aged in four different barrels, right. Wait, he already bought one and cracked it. Oh my God, it's worth it's worth every damn dime. Can I get another one? Or <laughs> you, you know, he still has one left. He's going here and buy it. <laughs> but the, the biggest one I think we had was the Colossus sitting behind you there from Duclaw. Oh, that oh, was there in the corner twenty four point two percent. Yep, but that was smooth. That was that, that was. I think it was a barley wine aged in brandy barrels I for had three that years. Was good. That is that's a sipping beer. And I wanted to, I bought it, and we sat down here, and we shared it amongst us three of us, and it was very, very good. Wish I'd had the revolution style to bring oh, it home. Man. That was a good one. <laughs> so the wood fire, is that going to be your, in your brew house soon? No, I'm not doing that, but I've done crazy, <laughs> yeah. really dumb stuff. I did a... Uh, Viking thing you did. Yeah, the rocks. There were the rocks. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The hot rocks. Yeah. I did a hot I rocks. did a Stein brew, and uh, oh. it took me two weeks to recover from that. that Explain was, what a Stein brew is. So uh, you achieve boil by by dropping super hot rocks down into the wort. That's how they would do the brewing. So this oh, was yeah. done back before metal. This is like you know. Uh, so you would have a wooden bucket. So you can't put a wooden bucket over a fire, right? It would right. catch fire. So they would heat up the rocks and put them in into the wart. And, and they're not sterile back then. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> they weren't sterile in my backyard either. <laughs> not even close. So the funny, there is a story that goes with that. So um, it was I was doing it, and another home brewer out in San Diego was doing it. We were doing a simulcast. And uh, I was like, I'm determined. By God, I am going to brew with freaking rocks. I'm not going to put any of your gas to it. So I went out to Red Lion uh, to the granite place out there. Uh, Frank's. Yep. Went out there. and Carmen. I, I found out that your countertops are not really granite. Okay. All right. So what I did was is I had my cooker, and I had my cooker set up. I could do full hogs in it, whatever. And I put the my granite pieces, because that's what I wanted to use was granite, yep. right? Put them all in the cooker. Jesse comes up, and we're sitting there and having a couple beers while I'm waiting for this stuff to get hot. And we're like, eh, it smells like plastic burning. <laughs> so I go over and lift the lid up to the to the cooker, and <clears throat> my granite rocks were it's on fire. Filler. <laughs> exactly. It's glue. It yeah. is. It's just glued. It's just dust. It's, it's granite glued granite dust to yes. make a granite mm-hmm. top. Yep. So, so that didn't work out too well. That didn't work out well at all. <laughs> Not well at all. So one of the other good things about being in South Central Pennsylvania is we have a lot of quartz yep. around here. So I'm looking in the backyard, and Jesse goes, what's, what's this stuff over here? And I was like, quartz. That'll work. It's hard. Right, so I, one of the things you don't want to use is say sandstone mm-hmm. because it'll, if you put sandstone, it'll dissolve. In, no, it'll explode. explode. Oh, it explodes. Explode. Yeah. Explode. Yeah. yeah. So quartz will not. It can absorb the heat. You yeah. Know, put it. In, it'll take that shock. So <laughs> we quick run around the yard and we're picking up all these hunks of of. Uh, you know, quartz all over the place, and I'm like, well, we'll, we'll just hose it off. <laughs> <laughs> so we hosed it off. So the clean, sanitized, clean, sanitized out the window. Sanitized, out the window. Yeah, out the window. <laughs> the fire will take care of that. So yeah, yeah the fire exactly. will take care of that. So we started over, and I achieved. I made this beer with just dropping the rocks in it. You know, and it was July. Another dumb move. <laughs> Should not have done this in July. I mean, I was just. 
that was painful. So basically what I did was I brewed a beer that tasted like dirt, you know, for the most part. It was not good at all, but I can sit here and say that I did it. You a, did it. I yep. did a yeah. honest to God. And like stuff. you guys have all said, home brewing, it's, a, it's it, experimental. Yeah. 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 How many people can say they've actually done something like that? Yeah. yeah. Not yeah. many. My dumb ass, I want to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> Under controlled circumstances. Much more controlled circumstances. <laughs> no, yes. no, get drunk first and then do it. Yeah. Right? No. I've been right. looking into the, the – I don't – it's the smoked beers, but it's the ones that they heat up these irons and they stick them into yeah, it. Yeah, cool. Oh. You know, and, that, and the, the caramelization and different things that you can achieve, but it's after you've done everything. So it's like you've got your beer, it's carved everything, and like basically quenching beer, and I'm like... You're hardening it. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. What can this be? Tempering, yeah. tempering the beer. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. like, what can this be? But then also... But yeah, my nephew was the one that he was like, "What do you think about this?" And I was like, "I, I like, like that. Yeah, sounds mm. interesting. That's cool. Mm. That's cool." So the one thing I mentioned, you guys had mentioned early on, you said you, you brew a braggot beer. What is a braggot beer? So is that like I got the bragging rights? Is that what that is? <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, so a braggot is a blend or a mix between a mead and an ale. Okay. Um, so funny story when we were up in NHC, Rhode Island, I actually found a. Um, Actually, Adam has it now. Mr. Beer Kits. Mm-hmm. Vintage, like 1979. Dave, you got one of them, right? The cans were rusty. <laughs> so went through and decided, okay, so I'm going to brew this up. I'm going to do a braggot, and I'm going to use Mr. Beer. So I did a mead, and I, I do a lot of meads. Meads are fun. Um, I highly suggest doing meads. They're just they're a blast. You, you do it, you set it in the corner and forget about it, you know, type thing. So I got a hold of the folks uh, up at Mr. Beer, and I'm like, hey, I'm going to bring a braggot to NHC, and it's going to be a Mr. Beer kit. And they're like, what? <laughs> oh, boy. So we did. I did the braggot, and it didn't turn out too bad. I mean, it was, it was good. It was a blonde ale. You know, it was the ale side, and the um, mead was just a honey blossom, I think was a honey blossom. But I had the folks from Mr. Beer came over. You know, they were all into it. And then we had a bunch of other, you know, you know Brad Smith came over. He was digging it. and John That's from Palmer, Beer Smith. Yeah. Okay. John Palmer was over. And, and uh, John Blickman and all those guys, they were, like, digging on this. And, like, is this a Mr. Beer kit? I'm like, yeah, it's cool. Oh, dude, you got to <laughs> hear some new equipment. Try it on our yeah. shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the coolest thing, the coolest thing going out to Homebrew Con is that you're talking to guys that are gods. Mm-hmm. Like these are the grandfathers of homebrewing, mm-hmm. and they're talking to you like, you know, you're you're just as important as. Yep. That's pretty cool. They are cool, and they're down to earth. They're a hundred percent into what you're doing. Club night, there was there was a dozen of them walking around. Like Brad Smith had walked around, tried a beer, and was like, "Hey, that's pretty good." And I was like. He liked my beer. He liked my beer. Like, Geek out. Yeah, like yeah. that's and that's part of it. Like, where else can you do that? And you know, I built a funny car engine, and you know, now uh, John Force is walking past yeah. me and saying that this, you know, this is the best engine. Get y'all giddy. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. That's pretty cool. That's awesome. All right, so yeah. we got another beer here. Yeah, yeah let's go. We got a couple it. more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, three I think left. This is yours, Chuck. Yep, this is an ESB. Uh, this, oh yeah, this first is, time, first time brewing. So, so this is a style that is starting to come I'll, back. Uh, I'll take all honest opinions. ESBs are this. great beers. So I love them. So the first time, six percent, six percent, six percent. Yeah. So the first time I had one was up at Haymowers. And oh yeah, and the, oh, this okay. is a lost style, style, but it's on. coming back. Oh yeah, it's because it's it's easy. anybody can drink this. You know, it, it's it's not an overpowering mm. beer. These no. last couple have been my no. favorite. Wow, and it's not it you, the name. You know, extra every special bitter. Everybody, mm-hmm. oh, I'm not going to drink that. It's, and that it has it's nothing not, to do with it. That's, that's what we've heard is that's why a lot of breweries it. don't yeah. do it because they, people yeah. won't buy a bitter beer. But it's not bitter. It's it's not. Yeah, right. But it's, Emery said if you put the word pub ale in. Yeah. Yeah, they will buy it yeah. because it is a nice, easy drinking God, that ale. Yep. Yeah, six percent. Mm-hmm. It's uh, this is this is a style Maris that's on my it? list. I think there's, I think that's Maris. Oh yeah, it's and it's all Maris. East Kent's Golding. Huh. That is yeah. so. 
And that's Nottingham you used to know. So what Nottingham. I've what I've read about bitters is there's a couple different. There's the strong bitter, right. the special bitter. Then there's a, like a, and it all went by the shillings. Yes, is how they did it, and that was by taxes. Yes, yes. So I think it had to do with the amount of malt. So this is this is kind of like in the middle. Not a very yep. strong one. It's it's it's, it's just a special. Yep. It's that is very good. Chuck. Thank you, thank you. It's right it's, down. You know, five six percent. It's pretty much my. I may alley, be stealing so. your recipe. All, right. okay. <laughs> All day long session. It's open. Uh, Next on the list. It's it's a it's a well, session. It's in Brewfather somewhere, right? So uh, okay. I don't know if it's shared in Brewfather. <laughs> it might be. I, I will say. So when I the first beer that I ever did was a beer that. It was a peanut butter beer, which oh. I was told by everybody, you can't brew with peanut butter. You got to do it with something else, which is complete bullshit. So, so they were YouTube certified, too? <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> and I reached out to a brewery and was like, hey, I know you guys are the big guys on the block. And what's actually really funny is that their name is Weldworks Brewery out of Denver. And I called him. Kind of fits the fits the title you get. Exactly. And I was like, look, I heard that your beer is one of the best peanut butter beers of all time. How do you do it? And the guy's like, I don't have time to talk to you right now. Oh, Let boy. me give you a call in a little bit. Okay. He called me back, talked to me for two hours on the phone. He call, he, So he yes. did the call back? and Did the guys... call back, talked to me for two hours on the phone. And was that like, is awesome. Yeah. And, and that's... That's the camaraderie yep. of beer. Okay. Like, you share the recipe. Hey, this is what I do. There has not been once that we've had a meeting to get together and talk to Randy. Because I don't want to I don't want to go through the podcast without talking about Randy. Especially <laughs> oh, man. Randy's awesome. Yeah. He, he will have beers. It's like, hey, that's just kind of a... It, it's not like 100%, yeah, this is the greatest beer in the world. But they are strong hitters. Oh, yeah. And you're like, hey, I really like that beer. And, and it's usually one... have ginger in it. Yep. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> usually has ginger. Yeah. He's, yeah, he, he's one he's, of our club uh, yeah. members. And, and he's, how, how would you say? Uh, he's one of the usual suspects. Yeah. 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 Just, uh, he's uh, he's kind of always shows up. And, you know, he's got a he's got a handful of brews that uh, are just, you know, like you said, they're, they're winners. And he just, that's his thing. Like he's got a great like dogfish sixty minute oh, yeah. IPA yeah. recipe, mm -hmm. and you know his ginger saison. Like he almost always shows up that with, is so and, good. you know, and just so reliable. You yeah. know, he just comes through. So every time do you with think that's you know he's found his niche, and he's just going to keep brewing that. He doesn't step outside. The, I mean, he, he is know, outside like he does, the box. Yeah. He is outside the box. He is outside. The but box. he's found his niche with his couple recipes, and this is what I'm bringing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and you all know it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's what I say about Enabler, too. You know, it's like there's all the BJCP stuff that we talked about before and the competitions that we do. But, uh, you know, it's like I like to say I can't color within the lines. I'm just. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're an enabler. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You were an enabler, yeah. Jim. Mm -hmm. Limes are they're slightly blurred. <laughs> yeah, you you can you can find somebody like Randy that has his niche beers and will give them to you wholeheartedly and say, hey. Do with whatever you can with it, make it better, whatever. And like to me, that's part of the that's that's the best part of the hobby. I, yeah, I think, and you guys have hit on this, and we've heard that over and over again with the interviews we've had. Mm -hmm. The camaraderie amongst the brewers, yeah. it is a community, mm -hmm. and, and everybody comes together for whatever. Hey, I'm having a problem with this. What do you guys? What and. It, <clears throat> And I brought it up several times in my automotive industry. There are several shops like me that are repair shops. We're not competitors. If I got a problem, I can call them. Hey, I, we've gotten this. What? And it's the same thing we're seeing with you guys. And I, being a home brewer or a professional brewer or whatever, you guys, I think it's awesome. Yeah, but mm -hmm. more important, I think, is off the scene. The cameras are off, and they're still talking positive about. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, not just one. It's yeah. like three or four. That to me, that's that's exciting because uh, yeah, it's not a show. There's it's, no. no, this it's is not. what no. we do. There's no, yep. there's no. Yeah, no, you look what what uh, Haymauer just went through. Oh yeah, you know? no shit. And yeah, everybody, everybody jumped on that. Everybody, and he, you know, everybody, you know, offered you know. their. Yep, yeah. you don't know. Could be me next. Could yeah. be you next. You know, I mean, it's, yeah, you never know. It's a community, and um, you know, even we're not we're not brewer brewers. You know, we're. Yeah, you are. Sure. Yeah, yeah, you are. Yeah, you are. Yeah, you are. Yeah, you are. <laughs> but we're also in this community yeah. now, and yeah. I love the contacts that we have made yeah. that we can call on a whim and say, hey, I've, 
like you know, I've called Tim Mark several times. I've called yeah. Jason oh, yeah. Snyder several times. Oh yeah, yeah. it's awesome. And, and now you uh, have a club to rely on. You know, yeah, we're here. But even yeah. the higher, like you know, to the time we spent about Haymeyer, you know. Oh my god! Any little thing yeah. from anybody mm-hmm. would help out. When, you know? it, when that happened, I I call, when at first I heard about it, I I was like, I called Der- I called Brooks. I'm like, I can't send you a text. I had to call you. There's just no way. Just how you doing? Yeah. So when Ben had that the other night on a couple of three weeks ago now, yeah. I'm sitting there in a hotel room. I'm half balling. I, I mean, I don't cry for anything, and I'm half balling when he's talking about his rebuilding already. And mm-hmm. God. so I'm going to join, but we're going to send Dave to the meetings. <laughs> <laughs> you just got to keep him awake. Yeah, oh yeah. darn! Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got to jump to this one because I've been sneaking. Yeah. There. So that, we got one more here, yeah, but then we're going to cheers it out. Yeah. This is the. This is yours? Yeah, so this is Driveway Gnome. It's a black IPA. Driveway Gnome. So where did that name come from? So Driveway Gnome is actually the uh, beer that was a collaboration of the very first. We do this thing. On YouTube, when you go to my channel, you'll see Homebrew Wednesday. I did. Yeah, yep, yeah, I've seen yeah, a few of them. So about that. It's 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 a lot of folks do it around. So this was the beer that we brewed at the very first Homebrew Wednesday Homecoming, which was at our house, and uh, the the. <laughs> The hops that came up from this came from New Zealand. A good friend of mine who's no longer with us, uh, Paul Wicksteed, time for another one. If you go on to YouTube, look up time for another one. You will find some of the best content you could ever find on his channel, and it's still there. Everything's there. Well, he came from New Zealand, hung out with us for a couple of days, and we had home brewers from all over the country stopped at a house, and we brewed this beer. So, oh, so this is a collaboration. This you had a collab- bunch of yep. So this is done with uh, uh, yeah. Smell it and taste oh, it. It, it, it lasts. There's different flavors throughout mm-hmm. the lasting. Mm-hmm. Now, the neat thing about this is there's there's wow. midnight weed is what gives it the color. Wow. But there are no. So I'm not going to pass tomorrow's drug test. <laughs> no. no, I think you failed that. <laughs> no, I no, think I he will. said no. wheat, not not wheat. Wheat. <laughs> wheat, 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 wheat. Yeah. Well, you know what they so, say. And all that does is give yeah. it color. You know, it, it adds yeah. nothing else to the beer. So that is so of the black IPAs I've had. That is one of the smoothest ones right. I've That's drank. That's why I had to bring that up quickly because I'm. Sneaking it. You were over here. I know it's an IPA. I know to freaking drink them before we toast them. So. <laughs> I said, I know it's an IPA. It smells yeah. super smooth. This is yeah. very this, super smooth. Wow. Well, they no, say, there are uh, New Zealand hops that are in this as well. You know, definitely after tonight, I can get rid of that, I don't know, stigma. I don't know what the right word is of when somebody says IPA because we've had so many different... And you yeah, know, you, every you, time you go out to a bar, or what, I, again, I travel a lot. It's always, oh, it's, it's heavy and hits hard, and it's like, I don't like this. Yeah, very, very hoppy. Very, very, very hoppy. Yeah. Yeah. Very hoppy. Very bitter. Well, they yeah. say yeah. that's where you got to find, you know, you just got to find what really appeals to you. And right. that, I think, right. you know, the, the trend with hazy IPAs from the last 10 years and all of that stuff, you know, it's all... You know, you're getting all of that flavor because of, like SJ said before, where you're adding that in right. the brew, right? You know, it's like it's in the fermenter usually, you're, you know, so you're getting all of the nice tropical flavors from those citrusy hops. And, right. you know, that's the stuff when, when it's, you're like, okay, yeah, this is, you know, when I start to hone that, I'm like, I drank this and, yeah, this this is what I like, you know. Yeah. And you, you know some some stuff is grassy, earthy, you know, but uh, you know the, the citrusy stuff. I think I think it's awesome um, what you guys have done is a home brewers, and some of you have been doing it a long time, <laughs> longer longer than some of us even thought about doing it before it was even popular. Mm-hmm. I mean, craft beer has not really become into the no. mainstream until the last eight to ten years. Well, here on the East Coast, yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 We're always for, we're always we're way behind. Yeah. We're always way behind the, on the yeah. trends. But you know, we had mentioned this several times. I think in 2011 there was like 80 craft brew houses in PA. Now there's 500. Mm-hmm. And then you got home brewer associations or something like you guys, mm-hmm. where people have been doing this and putting out great fucking beers. I'm sorry, man. It's this shit's really good. Oh, good, thank you. Thank there, you. There. Thank yeah. you. Appreciate and we didn't drink it. everything you guys brought. No, nope. oh, no, there's still stuff that yeah. we haven't even touched <laughs> yeah, yet. Yeah. Holy <laughs> shit! It, it really comes into like I'm, I'm. I don't want to brag, but I think I make a better steak at home. I, I think 
I well, do. Yeah, we, yeah. yeah, right. I think I do a little bit better job at, at barbecue. Well, all. you don't need your Worcestershire sauce with this. Exactly. <laughs> there you go. And, and that's part of it. It's, it's and, and that's the thing. But and that and we've mentioned this several times. I don't mind going out to a craft brew pub because if I go somewhere, I'm where I'm looking. I'm looking for a brew house that has good beer and food, good food. and maybe something different for my wife because she doesn't do the beer scene. True. Yep. Mm-hmm. And when we had Lydia and Stone on, which made them unique is. They make a beer tailor, so they're taking some Pennsylvania yeah. liquors and yeah. putting it with the beer. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. You don't even know you're drinking a beer. Yep. That, yeah. But I, I don't mind, A, paying the money right. for the beer. If it's I good. And I don't good. mind right. paying the money right. for the food because usually good. the food's yeah. going to be better. I don't like the chain, the chain restaurants. I really don't. That's my last choice if I got to go somewhere. And like you just said, I can make a better steak at home. I'm going out to enjoy it. Right, you know, yeah. and I get and we make a better beer at home. I think you guys. Are t- <laughs> I, mean, I haven't had a bad one tonight I, at all. I, I, I find good. it hard to. I mean, like I said, I have I have six on tap, and I drink most of my stuff. I yeah. Mean, oh, that, yeah, that's just the way it is. I mean, because yeah. we brew so much. So do you we, guys find it when you go do go out? Do you find yourself comparing your beer oh, to theirs? Yeah. For sure. Oh, you have yeah. to. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's all part How of many of you pat yourself on the back like, oh, shit, my shit's better than that? <laughs> nah. We shouldn't, just... com- we shouldn't comment on that. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You can neither <laughs> confirm or deny. Nor deny. Exactly. <laughs> my brother-in-law. Played the fifth on that. Huge beer snob. Huge beer snob. And when you go on, like, untapped and... and clicking through like he's up up in the several thousands of check-in beers and his first comment to me was that's not bad and i was like well if i want him over (laughs) there you go (laughs) you know that that was kind of my like my stopping point there are times that you really have to check yourself though yeah because yes some of our beers they're good some of them aren't and it's experimental right correct but they've we've also we're in that niche that we get to be experimental, and my mortgage payment doesn't depend on it. Right, right. right. Yep, I, right. I, yep. Right. And right. you talk and again, to a lot of these brewers, they've had failed beers. Mm-hmm. And what do they got to do? They got to dump it and start again. Now they're out of product to get on the line really quick. Yep. Right. And we're yeah. talking five or ten gallons. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 So. so we can be a little bit crazy. And it's funny when you talk to some of the commercial brewers out there you know, that started off as home brewers. You do have some that it went right into commercial. But they... Like we talked to them, they're like, "Man, I miss those days." Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. where they could be creative. You yep. know, like <clears throat> truly creative. You know, I did a beer um, two years ago that I that I used maple donuts in. Oh no! <laughs> yeah, it was na- maple <laughs> donut. Yeah, oh, it boy. was. But you're not going to do that on a commercial no. scale. You're no, just no. not maple yeah. donut glazed. Yeah, that's it. A glazed donut. <laughs> Yeah, like like oh. gift horse when you were walking knee, you were knocking uh, walking in uh, uh, knee walking in on those uh, donuts that you had. Oh, or you were walking in with those. Oh, yeah, this, yeah, the uh, happy camper donuts. Yeah, it's, yeah it, those, I couldn't remember oh, the name of them. God. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you just had them. Well, you love g- them. gentlemen, I tell you what, this has been a blast, and this is a first that we've had eight. Beers? At least nine? Uh, <laughs> who's counting right now? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> to put on a show. Uh, again, you guys are with this, the Southern County Amateur Brewing Society. That's us. And you guys are on Facebook. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Look at no website. Facebook. No website. No. Nope. Nope. No. No. Membership is X amount per year? Yep. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. Yep. 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 If you're a home brewer, make sure you get out there. Look up, look up these guys. Look up scabs, mm-hmm. not the ones across the football or, or <laughs> line or or the arm thing. Look up scabs, Southern County Amateur Brewing Society, and, and get out there and look at. We're going to have to definitely check into you guys. We are, we are. I can't go to another meeting. I can tell you that. I. I all right, so you can't. You're always fucking traveling. <laughs> yeah, you're never in town. <laughs> so we'll send Dave. Maybe yeah, that's right. That's all right. We are well, above we, the AV line, so we do. We, I mean, we have done just, uh, the Skype videos. Yep. And, and mm-hmm. I mean, oh, that's. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. we'll just have to yeah. make sure I plan my trip to BWI. Head that yeah, direction. Yeah, exactly. via red line. There you go. Yeah, yeah this, via red line. We've had a freaking blast, and we look forward Absolutely. to seeing more of you guys out, and hopefully we get to these brew festivals that you guys are out. 
Uh, every beer we've had here tonight, I, I can't say it's been wonderful. Um, it's, been long, it. it's been good. Yeah, we really unique. appreciate that. Yeah. That's, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Especially like, well, I, I can't even say the last three or four or five, but <laughs> <laughs> three or four or five. <laughs> <laughs> the last eight. <laughs> so before we get out of here, what is going to be the Cheers beer? This is a special beer you were saying, Steve. Yeah, so this is the mystery bag beer, and this was my version of the mystery bag beer mm-hmm. as a club. I put together a whole bunch of bags. They pulled a number out of the hat, and then they got whatever that number corresponded with the beer, and they had to brew with it. This was my version of that. It entered into the... Uh, oh, um, Belgian Triple. No. the, no. the Oh, it's a Belgian. Iron Brewer. Yeah. Iron, Iron Brewer. Brewer. Okay. Iron Brewer. So this is a Belgian Triple. Oh, yeah. It is uh, 10%. Wow. So uh, that's that warm beauty. feeling I'm already feeling in my body. Yeah. Go, go big or go home. <laughs> and what holiday? Go big or go home. Yeah, Separate, yeah. Celebrate? What holiday? Yeah, so this is uh, our St. Patrick's Day episode. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So if you're out there, let's raise a glass with the Southern County Amateur Brewing Society and the CPP, and let's all be bonded, bonded by, by beer. beer. Salante. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.